And let the games begin. We're just gonna fill you in. Um, I say dope a lot, and a lot of the times it's very intentional. Dope, 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 dope. That's dope, 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 dope. That's dope. He's a pretty dope dude. 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 Love it. 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 I have always believed the road to excess leads to the palace of wisdom. I gotta bend all the way over here. Please make your voice be heard. And I'm leaving society to move out to the country and smoke crystal meth with rednecks. Maybe you have a differing opinion than us. Maybe we're completely wrong and you are the one lone person in the world that is right. That's why you're here tonight. Eventually, me and Dave Jarvis are going to Hollywood. But guess what? Some of us are actually pretty friendly. Yeah, but most of us are fine upstanding young man. Fine upstanding young man. <laughs> Uh, smoke weed. Welcome, blow your brains out as we represent the overtaxed masses tonight. You can participate in the program in the chats. We have Bad Motor Scooter joining us here in a few, and you can participate in the chats. You can ask Ariel a question. You can ask Megan Moshpit a question. You can ask Dave Jarvis a question or yours truly. You can ask me a question like about that picture right there. All right. So here are our hosts tonight, Ariel, myself, What's Ricky up? Warden, and David motherfucking Jarvis. I know, uh, I know we like to deviate every now and then we'll have like a comedian or an actor, but I want everybody to realize blow your brains out is first and foremost about music. So what I'm curious is Ricky, uh, what have you been listening to this week? Uh, let's see, man. Uh, I've been watching a bunch of shit. That's for sure. Um, man, I honestly, what I've listened to the most is our song coming out April the 14th called truly free. Ooh. Tell me more. It's a wonderful song. It's a wonderful song. Ricky really knocked it out of the park. He really channeled his inner Jim Morrison with mm -hmm. uh, what I haphazardly threw together and called jazz. <laughs> yeah, the song is fucking amazing. It's a song that Dave Jarvis made. His band is or his musical project is X Extensual. X Extend Chill is how it's spelled. And, uh, man, I just asked him to make me a crooner type of a song in the vein of Tom Jones or Harry Connick Jr. or something like that uh, as I go into my retirement years of music here. And so he made a fucking killer song, and I wrote these lyrics that I think fit it perfectly. It's called Truly Free. It's a great song, and it's going to be out uh, April the 14th. And you can pre-order it uh, on DistroKid. How do you pre-order it, David Jarvis? Uh, you can go to whatever streaming site that you prefer. It's on all of them, pretty much, except for Pandora, Pandora I believe. Uh, but yeah, you just go in and pre-save it, pre-order it, and it will be waiting on your doorstep in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Kick ass, and thank you very much. All right, thanks for asking, Dave Jarvis. Thank you, brother. Uh, Ariel, what have you been listening to in your in your pill induced haze? Ha. Um, so I just got my Corolla back. I'm so excited, and I um, been rifling through my CDs. And today I am on Kelly Clarkson's new album, Chemistry. Pretty dope. It's kind of nope. sad, but pretty cool. Nice listening to that local music. Did it come out this year or last? Last year. Love that local music. Yeah. Uh, is it like covers or is it like all original stuff? All original. Nice. Uh, does she write her own stuff or does she have like a, a team helping her? 
I think it's a little bit of both. So she writes a lot of music. She wasn't able to perform a lot of her original stuff a while back because of labels. Um, so when she got to break away, they let her do most of her own writing. And this whole current album was over her latest divorce and all of those issues. Um, but yeah, it was really good. I love her vocals. I love her runs. I love... Um, practicing runs because she she goes really really high so i like to try to match the the range which is almost impossible but but yeah, she has a good writing range. with her that helps yeah i i often come into trouble because i sometimes mistake her for pink when i just hear the voice because the voice the voices are very similar very big uh, power. powerful but, yeah oh absolutely and a uh, great ear for, uh, yeah, great range and uh, yeah. bravado. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. They can definitely, uh, she can harmonize and things like that, which is really cool. I, I struggle with that sometimes. So I really admire it in uh, vocalists who can just pick it up real quick and do harmonies. And she, much like you, has to balance a talk show with their music career. So does it's a feel good out area i love it yeah, get it through. <laughs> what you what you been listening to megan well recently i was listening to uh fear by cortez and and i was listening of course to some hillbilly orchestra you know uh today while i was cleaning i was just jamming my lake house uh playlist so <laughs> the, a lot of that local stuff is on there um and you know like maybe some keith urban eric church just just chilling that's cool that's cool so you uh you finalized the uh lineup for your uh your uh festival yes so you the just, main primary so you lineup just, we have some special so announcements coming like for like all them Oh yes, yeah, like just a vibe playlist that I play usually in the very, very beginning of the morning, and um, you know, uh, Boltneck runs some regular sound just jams when we're first setting up and doing our sound checks. So we've got that, you know, playlist set up. Then we got our, you know, we're not giving too much away about our openers, but we've got people playing in the day, and then we've got our main headliners all lined up. Badass. Now, now take us through this. Uh, when do the festivities begin? Uh, do you float the river first? Well, typically, uh, uh, well, uh, you know, it's kind of an all-day thing. Like, you come out, you, if you want, come out and camp Friday night. That's the best option to take full advantage of everything. Come out Friday night, camp overnight, and then you're already there when the food trucks and vendors and bands set up, and then you won't miss anything. Then you're there all day. It's just a party, you know? Camping, yeah. partying, jams. I, I see. Fi <laughs> I see. Fishing is on the itinerary. Is it like fish that? You Absolutely. Can keep no, it's a great spot it for fishing. Uh, oh, you can God. keep it as long as you got, you got a fish. You better have a fishing license, though. That's all I gotta say. Because game wardens are uh, m effort. Okay, I'm sorry, but they are. They don't and so play. just make sure you have your fishing license if you intend on fishing. You can get it from Walmart, literally for like 25 bucks or something like that. Just go get your fishing license so you don't get messed with. And then, you know, you're free to fish all day. Just be careful. Don't leave any hooks in the water. You know, look out for people. It's a party vibe, but, you know, everybody look out for each other. Word. Very cool. And how long would you say the whole float experience lasts? An hour, couple hours. You can you can float all day if you want, um, but you know the the bands are on land. <laughs> but you know, I just like to go dip in, get when it gets hot, and then come back and enjoy the music. Yeah. Can you see the Can you see the bands from the water, or does the tide yes. just take you where it takes you? Uh, this year you can, yes. But if you float too far down, then you're, you know, you better have somebody coming for you. This year we don't have a bus coming to get you, okay? You're just chilling. <laughs> stay put. Like, stay in the designated area. Tie yourself off or whatever. But um, there are uh, places, like the next exit up, that'll take you back. But, you know, unless you got a friend. <laughs> <laughs> 
willing to come get you. Maybe just chill there in the area. Now, I, I know you can't give too much away, but uh, let me ask, are there any out-of-state bands going to be playing? No, not this year. Usually I try to keep it local. I really like to rep for my local band, so it's all local. <laughs> and uh, what sort of vending will there be available? We got some barbecue and hamburgers, chicken burgers, you know, um, and then they got a lot of appetizers too. So if you get hungry, you are good to go. I love being very, awesome. very food motivated. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, girl. And it is BYOB, but you know what? Um, we are trying to curb away from glass only because we're talking about people that are barefooted in the river, potentially children. You know, just be careful, be respectful of the property, common sense, like respectful of the river. Don't sink your beers, please, because that's so trashy. Just bring your beer back up, throw it in the trash. It's all good. <laughs> Pretty simple. Now, are, yeah. are there pre are there presale tickets, or do you have to pay at the door? Or, currently, or, there, or, um, at the dirt, currently, there are. Currently, there are. Hmm. Well, currently there are pre-sale tickets online, um, or if you catch me while I'm in town, I'll sell you a pre-sale ticket um, for cheaper than you're going to get it online. Typically online, there is a service fee. Eventbrite always charges that. But if you want to pay cash on site, we can do that too. If you don't have cash, just pay in advance on the online site, you know. Um, but yeah, both options are available. So slide into your DM to catch you yes. while you're in town and That's save right. yourself an event yeah. charge. And you can pay for your camping in advance too. And it is only $10 a person this year. We're not price gouging. And this year I have full control over the property. So it's, it's just a world better than, you know, previous years. We've run into issues where I can't fully claim or take control of the property this year. There is one way in and one way out, and that way is my way. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm very proud of you, Megan. How you gonna do it? My way, my way. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, cool. check it out, everybody. <laughs> Also, all the way from California, say hi to Johnny TV. Hi, Johnny. What's up, guys? How are you doing? Great. Oh, How are you Johnny, doing? it's always great to see you, bro. It's good to see you guys too, man. I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting all day to come on out, blow out, out, blow, bro, your brains out. Yeah, we're just chilling, talking to Megan Moshpit, who's what also out? out in California right hey, now. Megan. Coast of Mesa, where you at, bro? Long Beach. Hey, neighbor. Yeah. Long Beach, California. Yeah, so Megan is a uh, Texas hottie out in uh, the California sunshine right now. She puts together this show right here in Texas, Hillbilly Throwdown and Float Fest every year. So we're lucky okay. to have that and have her taking the time to do that for all these local bands every year. Party on the river. Yep. It's totally a unique okay. event. No one else really is able to pull off an event like this. So I'm really fucking thrilled that you were able to do it again this year. And I hope it's a fucking smashing success and is able to keep this going every year for us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you guys. Yeah. Most definitely. A, a cause that's very close to my heart, uh, the facilities. What can you say about the facilities? Oh, man, this year I can't say enough about the facilities. I mean, there's actually a laundry room. There's a shower. There's fully handicapped capable restrooms. Wow. It's nice. This year it's nice. Now and I got a fully built there. stage. Yeah, and even a pavilion. So God forbid it rains on us, we'll still be good. <laughs> I don't think it's going to rain in Southern California. You can't <laughs> rain. It never rains on my show. No. <laughs> We're not doing that. This is in Texas again, Johnny. Santo this year, to be exact. Mineral Wells area. Oh, Johnny, in Texas this year? No, Always. it's in Texas every year. She's in California <laughs> because she works out there, basically. Why are you in California, Megan? For anybody? Well, in you know. 
sometimes a man takes you places you never intended to be. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So she's out there with family, Johnny, and working. Okay. And we're very fortunate that she used to do a lot of shows here as a as a booking and promoter. True. I miss but, it. But she she is known affectionately here locally as Megan Moshpit. And this is her show that she's doing annually called the Hillbilly Throwdown Float Fest. So it's on the river here. It's on the Brazos River, Johnny. Okay. So you can float in the water, fish, drink your beer, and enjoy music and and uh, and and just camp. Things. If you get too drunk to leave, don't worry about it. Just roll out your douche canoe, head over to your <laughs> tent, and chill. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Circumstance on you? I don't know. You, you should set. You should set up a banjo player like halfway down. I the know. Floor you know. I've been trying to get. I've been trying to get honky like every other year. I've been trying. I'm going to get them. I will. And also, Scotty, Scotty Mancop, he plays the banjo. I've been working on getting his ass out there, but literally. Some people might be scared if you hear a banjo out there, though. You know what I mean? It's like, frick it down, now, 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 now. Oh, shit. Heels have eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> no, no, I really have been working on that. I'd really like to have um, some Rebel Rock or, you know, some Rockabilly join my team this next year. So we'll see what happens. Are there any bands that you haven't had on that you really would like, but besides Honky, of course? Um, yes. Um, yes, there are actually several that I've been talking to. Um, one off uh, hand is Moccasin Creek. They're out of Florida. And they're nice. very good. They're kind of like rap, rock, country, like mix. But it's like, I don't know. You'd have to hear them. They got a song called um, Poor Chonky. Hilarious. You guys got to hear it. Poor they, I'm, but they're on my list. I'm trying to get them guys because that's kind of the vibe, you know, like a redneck Woodstock man. So how have you been keeping tabs uh, for from the Texas scene from California? Like, do you just your friends clue you in? Or do you... One... <laughs> You know, sure. basically, just when I come back into town, just the ties that I have has been enough to keep this going. Like that, the good people that I know already, and in the, this festival has kind of been like a grassroots type of deal where people become a part of it, and then they just are continuously a part of it. It's like you know, a cult following type thing. You know, sometimes a lot of the same people come back every year, and it um. And that includes the musicians and a lot of the musicians that I happen to know are in multiple bands. So, Hey, that works out. <laughs> Line them up. Now, uh, I, I'm curious about the, uh, cop situation. Like, uh, no, 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 no. we don't do that. Okay. You, okay. you know, let me tell you how we get around that. This is private property. This is private property that I happen to rent. Over here on the screen, I've pulled up the amenities here so you can see the covered yeah. uh, stage That's area. Cool. It's nice this year, y'all. There's still the same access to the river. You can still get cooled down, chill, float around. You could take your boat out if you wanted to. You can go fishing. But it's right there. Everything's just right there. This place the is... River, the river is actually nicer up that way, isn't it? That's right. Yep, it's right off 281, actually, right under the bridge. Okay, I'll show a map here in just a minute. We'll talk about that. Right now, I got the amenities up. It says plenty of parking. Here's the campgrounds. That's right, and it's that only 20 nice. to get in. You can be there all day. You can listen to all the acts. And if you get too drunk to leave, just pay an extra $10. You can spend the night. Ooh, look at those bathrooms. Yes, the bathrooms are so nice this year. This all I ask is that you please be respectful of the property. Like these people are opening their literally their home to us so that we can have a safe and good time with nice amenities. Just keep it that way, you know? Yeah. Look how big that covered pavilion area is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. We got appointment on the 12th and the 17th. Right there. And that's Saturday, May 18th. Yeah, that looks lovely. But you could put a dead body in there and no one would ever find it. <laughs> well, uh, please don't, because I'll have to freaking pay for it. That's <laughs> <laughs> an extra <laughs> 10 bucks. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, man, very cool. So so what else have you been up to, Megan? You know, I work my ass off. Right now I'm pulling like 50-hour weeks, just trying to, you know keep up with the joneses out here in california Damn. Are there a lot of joneses but out there? i come back and forth luckily you know with this position i have my own like air taxi back to texas anytime i need it and so that makes me happy that's what i work hard for come on to take a free ride free ride, free ride. Free ride. Free ride. we're all over the place on that one but i like I like it. Yeah. It's called surround sound. Right. So here comes the map, everyone. Prepare yourselves. Bum, ba, da, bum. Here we go. Can you see what we're looking at here? It says 281 right, right here. Now. Right now. Right on the river. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. This is the Brazos River. Here's Star of the River. And it is beautiful. I mean, they really take really good care of this property. Going to zoom out here to show you. All you uh, got to do, head down 20 till you reach 281. Like you're going to go to Stephenville, but instead of going left, go right. That's all you got to do. I'm leaving Stephenville. Uh, and it's right there. Mineral wells earlier. I mean, it's nowhere near Mineral Wells. No, it's it actually is pretty near Mineral Wells. It's like 10 minutes away from downtown Mineral uh -huh. Wells. Well, See, 180 West, which is one of my bands, 180 West run is the next, if you zoom out a little more and you yeah, see the on. triangle, um, yeah, yeah, that right there, see that triangle, that's 20 and 180 West. If you just head straight down, you can get to it from 180, but it's easier from 20. So just right. head down 20 and just that exit for Stephenville, take a right, and then it's just a tiny bit down the road. It's like right there. You'll see it. It's a big, nice ranch. It does say Star of the River. So. And for anybody that's planning on like partying over in Mineral Wells, just a heads up, everything closes at 9 p.m. Except for the hillbilly throwdown. <laughs> exactly. So you might as well stay the extra day. Yes. Come on. <laughs> Plus, we're you have bouncers? And that's usually cheaper. I'm just saying. You don't have to go anywhere. Your food, your lodging, your restroom, everything is there this year. Plus entertainment. You cannot go wrong. Yeah, I'm curious. Do you have bouncers in case people get a little too oh, rowdy? Definitely. You gotta get rid of them? Yeah. Definitely. And if I can't find one of them, you're going to deal with me. I'm just well, imagining forget, you. Uh, Char <laughs> as as Char no, I, I think do. Charlie I will got be that running too. sound. And Charlie don't take no shit. That's oh, right. I love we, him. He's so we cute. don't play. <laughs> well, I see what you're saying now. It's actually a little further past Weatherford than it used to be. And yeah. then a little north from there. It's okay. literally one exit down from the first place we ever did it um, at Hillbilly Haven. So right. that's one exit up the street. And that's under um, the 20 bridge. No, that's under the 180 bridge. But if you, yeah, you just go one, if you stay on 20 instead of taking Mineral Wells Highway, just stay on 20 the whole way. You're going to take the exit at Stephenville exit. You're going to turn right and you're going to almost be there. You can't is miss it. Is Billy Haven still around? Yes, it is. Every year they're firing awesome. it up. Sounds fun. Sounds fun. Very you know, uh, the you think about doing this year, like this in the fall? I'm sorry. I have thought about it. I thought about, I was considering like September, but you know, some, it's a gamble. I want to do it when it's hot outside or at least warm outside. And it's a gamble in September. You never know, you know, you might still be hot or you might be freezing. <laughs>
Hank from the Mighty Hank. Dank joining the panel. Good to Hi. see you, Hank Jarvis. What's up, motherfuckers? What's up, homie? Woo! There it is. There's that next Dank show, Saturday, May the 11th at Diamond Gems with the Argonaut, Rivethead, Warhog, Dank, and the Hedonistic Punk Vatos. Damn. What's up, fellas and ladies? Fellas. <laughs> What's up, brother? Hey, uh, we were just uh, talking about what we've been jamming over the last week. Uh, what you been jamming lately? Me? Who, me? Yeah. Ah. yeah. Um, let's see, man. Uh, Why? Well, I, I, I listen to a lot of old music. I like uh, uh, Jimmy Driftwood. Uh, I listen to a lot of Jimmy Driftwood. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, could, you, could you could you hum a few bars? Oh, uh, Battle of New Orleans. I mean, I'm sure y'all heard that. In 1814, we took a little trip. Also, right. fun fact: my grandpa played guitar on that song. Oh. Wait, hold oh. on. Dang. Like the original. The Jimmy Drift. Just became Hank's best it. friend. <laughs> oh, the Jimmy Horton. Hold, please. <laughs> Which it's Jimmy are we talking on about? My phone. Well, because the Horton is the one that got famous, but Jimmy Driftwood wrote it. <laughs> I don't think he's very popular. <laughs> and my family's not responding. Okay. I'll get back to you by the next show on this one. All right, but so he owned it. He owned like Jimmy, Jimmy Driftwood wouldn't have had a guitar player because he is the guitar player. He recorded a version oh. of the song. What are you trying to cut out? Huh? Yeah. God, he's the fucking cool. Yeah. He was, he was, he was, he was, he was born in 1830. In the time he was growing, he was making fiddles in Nashville, Tennessee. And then he came to this part of the, comp, uh, the country. And I, oh, man. The sons okay. Maybe they'll and his get daughters back to were born. And his son, John Morris, was my grandfather. Yeah, okay. keep playing it. Well, at least 130 years ago from Centrail. I'll kill. I'm telling what they told me. Headboard of Grandma's. Uh, Dude, he's such a he fucking made it. badass. That's so cool. No, he he. It's uh, not wrote, him. That's he not wrote the one. Something like three hundred. Yeah. Or no, he wrote something like a, a five hundred songs, but like three hundred were recorded by other people. Yeah. Bedstead, I, and I've heard that because he used her bedstead up, she ran him off. Let's do some of the kind of picking that he did. I watched him a lot. Oh, it, he, he, he's he's so much cooler than that. like everything he does is awesome. He was a, uh, a, a history teacher, and he used to write songs to make his kids like learn better or whatever. That's cool. That's good. That's cool. That Thanks for sharing with us. Oh yeah. Did he make? Did he say he made that guitar? Yeah, yeah. That's I listened to what he was saying. Yeah, he yeah. That's why they call him Jimmy Driftwood because he made a uh, guitar out of driftwood. <laughs> That's cool. That's fancy. Very cool. Uh, 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 if if you're into if yeah. you're into country music, definitely listen to Jimmy Driftwood. And we're talking like real country, not like the the snap of rap beats that they pass. Hot country really sucks. Yeah, well, that's not country music. That's just like uh, pop music with an accent. And we've already established this. It's like different versions of Leonard Skinner these days. <laughs> you know, it's all in the family with it. We did a show with them, me and Mongo, back in the day at the Texas Opry. And it was obviously, you know, it isn't 
what it used to be. But it's family members, and that's how they see it. As long as it's family, it's Leonard Skinner. No, I'm talking about the new country music. All the new country sounds like a different spin of a Leonard Skinner song. Oh, of course. I'm down with jamming some Skinner at any time. I love Skinner. Uh, well, I would say that uh, most cunt like the, like they said that the, I keep saying the shit. Uh, they're saying Queen B is the new queen of country. <laughs> they're about Beyonce. Fuck yeah, that's what they're oh, saying. My Atlanta. The new queen of country, huh? Uh, it's all a ploy. It's all a ploy. They're all morons. You know, technically she is from Texas, but. She's in league, man. She's in league with the dark side. <laughs> if, if 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 your parents were millionaires before you even started your music career, you ain't country. Yeah, you can't write real country without real loss and poverty and sadness. It, it goes along hand in hand. Real trial. Hey, that's the way I've always thought of heavy metal. You had Same, to have yeah. greed in you to do it right. That's right. You gotta been hurt, man. You gotta no suffering to i mean some of the best creation comes out like that at least know the ways of the street you know <laughs> heavy metal is is street music for fucking you know people who raise hell against all odds you're right <laughs> <laughs> okay you all oh, odds, sorry, country music, johnny johnny what do you think about country what music? What was that? Um, no, I don't listen. I don't. Music? I don't listen. I don't listen to much country music at all, bro. Oh, Except no, for I Beyonce. I like Johnny. the new Beyonce. I like the new Beyonce song. Yeah. Johnny listens to that Five Finger Death Punch, which is like heavy metal country rock. That's like. Oh shit! Let me yeah, shut they're up. Gonna be, they're going to be. Uh, they're going to be September. I'm going to be a hater. But if you want every song to sound the same, I agree. September six, September six, they're gonna be in Anaheim, and Johnny's gonna be there, and I'm gonna be there. Yes, sir. Yes, you know, see, I don't say that. that you have to be from a certain area in order to make country, but I will say this: Dwight Yoakam is from California, and he makes some fantastic country. Yes, he does. Then that is accurate. But he was done a long time ago. He hasn't wrote anything new recently, I don't think. Yeah, I'm still waiting for Sling Blade 2. <laughs> so my, my grandpa wasn't on a recording, but he did Who? play it with some friends. And then I'm dropping this. She link. don't. This is one of my grandpa's songs on YouTube. What was the question again? Thomas Mack and Cooper Allen. Do you know Cooper Allen and Thomas Mack? I do not. No, they do not. They're they country well western easy. singers. Appreciate you taking they're, a they're country. They're country western singers, and they and they and they cross over and they and they and they, and they rap. They they can rap also. Oh God, that's the worst. That's the fucking worst. <laughs> I knew that was going to work. You know what? Some of them people are good though. Jelly Roll is good. No. All right. You know, well, maybe. Oh yeah, he's good for but it's not it's not country music. <laughs> it's not, it's crossover genre. No, it's it's uh tattoo faced meth head motherfucking uh rap former uh, former uh, meth head, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, well meth heads have all right. I'm not into meth head country music. What's your name? Uh, <laughs> Megan. Megan, I'm gonna ask her. I think her name is your name Megan, right? Megan your name is Megan, right? Yes, it is. PZ, he's, yeah, PZ's got a question for you. Who's PZ? He is my, he's, he's my partner. Oh, hey, what up, PZ? What's your question? He's going to put it, he's going to put it in chat. Oh, shit. Let me, how do I get to the chat? Shit. I'll pull it up. Don't worry about it. I'll pull it up and we'll read it together. Uh, we lost Megan. We lost Megan. Yeah, I, I. As far as like country music, uh, do you feel like you have to be above a certain age in order to be convincing? Do you have to be above a certain age to be convincing? Is that the question? 
<laughs> no, no, no. I was, I was just talking to the panel as far as like, you know, what can be a believable yeah, country artist. If you're too young, is it believable that you did, you know, country things? Yeah, no, uh, being country is a lifestyle. Okay. Son of a bitch. Okay, what is the lifestyle. question? Check that out. Johnny Yarborough, member for three months. Appreciate nice. you, Johnny Yarborough. I don't know three what the question was. months, by the way. He hasn't asked the question yet. You're good. Oh, okay, good. I missed it completely if he did. No, nah, you're all right. We got you. I feel like true country is more like a, a life that you've lived. Yes, truth. Truth um, makes the best maybe, country. Maybe not an age, but the lifestyle that you lived. Because I, I don't know. There's so many avenues of country now. But like the if if we're leaning back on, uh, like Jimmy Driftwood, um, he tells stories. It sounds like, and he makes up his own guitars and instruments, and it's just his lifestyle. And so I think you really have to placate off of that if it's true country. No, all That's right, how you well, lived. Um, all right. Well, sure. Speaking of true country, this is Ariel's granddad playing guitar on this song, which is about the apocalypse. There's a little fiddle there. Hear that guitar plucking in the background. <laughs> Some steel. Cool? Oh. Got some new apocalyptic jams here. My castle of dreams came tumbling down. What? Reminds me of Hank Sr. My hopes of you plunged to the ground. The Lone Star Melody Boys. I'm just your husband. She's doing some festival. Suddenly, my world came to an end. Apocalyptic Love Affair. There you go. So that's Travis Sims and the Lone Star Melody Boys. That's like a guy who's trying it. to sound like Meg Williams. We got a little like bit. Uh, very similar. Hello, blah, 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 blah. That's bad. <laughs> hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. We're gonna always yeah. use a little bit more of that, you know. Good all country. Thank you, super chat. Thank you for that, super chat. Thank you, super chat. Thank you for that, super chat. Thank you, super chat. Thank you, Johnny Yarborough. Appreciate that five dollar super chat. Thanks, John. Thank you, Let's brother. get that super chat. Super chat train are rolling, everybody. Now, I was going to hey. ask, do you think that you have to be from a certain part of wherever to make proper country music? Or is it just the country's in your heart? I think it depends on the listener. Because, like, I particularly like red dirt country and old classic country. And, um, you know, I feel like that is based on the area that I come from. But if you're a California person, like when I listen to the radio out here, it's predominantly pop country. And it's a lot of country that I don't really care for. So I think it has to do with your geographics. Hey, I must come on here late. Where are you from? Texas. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> All right. Uh, oh. Look who's out on a date I, I think tonight. He means like what part of country or what part of Texas, I guess, is what he meant. Oh, my bad. North Central. I guess Fort Worth, Dallas, Weatherford, DFW area. She's right in the middle of the triangle. Worth. But I love I love Houston, 
I, you know, Houston music. I love Austin music. It just depends. Like, I don't really care for like fake country. Like the Canadian people trying to like sing country annoys me. If it's like an overly fake Texas accent, that gets on my nerves. I <laughs> Canadian Canadians like do fake Texas country accents. Oh yeah. My, was no it cross country ragweed? I think they're from Canada. Yeah, they're Canadian boys, right? Cross Canadian ragweed, ragweed. But I, I actually like their music, but they do rep Canada, so they let you know right off the bat that they're not really from Texas or, you know, the surrounding area. But you know, I mean, anybody could be good at something if they put enough work into it. You know what I mean? But. I think real the the point of country. I think the real the the grit of it is just experience and being able to tell a story, like Ariel was saying. Like you know, if you if you can tell a story, and you can make that story have feeling and connect with people, then that's that's where you're going. Whatever genre you're in, you know, that's what it's about. Oh, Dude, I totally agree. For some reason, they were playing pop country all day today in my work. but And I was like, oh, God, fuck this shit. But then they played Garth Brooks, the dance. And I'm not going to lie. I, I started crying in the warehouse. And I, I found an aisle that nobody could see me so that I could cry it out like a man. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> cry like a man, cry like a man. Well, Arkansas is in the chats, and she says hi to everybody. Ariel, Dave, Johnny, Hank, and guest Megan Moshpit, Johnny TV. Hi, friends. And then hey, she also passes hey, along a little, a little lady wisdom here. Apparently, Wednesday is a good, fuckable night. Okay. Getting over that hump. <laughs> the more Iron you know. Man, Eddie Lee says, hey, guys. Sorry about the taco bar uh, closing down, but... We'll be here promoting your shows on the concert calendar tonight at 9.30. Eddie Lee from Iron Man. Thank you for being here. Dude, that sucks, man. I'm so sorry for that to happen, man. That really sucks whenever that shit happens. Yep. Especially, he says that the, uh, you know, the owner there was really committed to the local music scene. Yeah, yeah. It's a damn shame what's going on. Um... Megan, have you heard about any uh, clubs that we haven't been clued into? Any uh, grand openings that we are unaware of? No, but you know who I keep hearing all about that I really have a lot of respect for, and I'm seeing them doing some great things. Haltem City Theater, man. They are really knocking out the shows. And sure. when I spoke to them in person, they, they have a personal, like, it's their personal agenda to make sure that they represent underrepresented music. And I really respect that. Really? I, I feel like uh, I, I just saw Jazz say that he hates uh, country music. Now, he, that is, and I spoke <laughs> to him about that because you know what? Of course, I talked to him about that because I was like, I have this show every year. I might want to do a battle of the bands, which is something we're talking about next year. We're going to do actual battle of the bands for leading up to Hillbilly Throwdown. Good plan. Um, something Mongo came up with, which I think is a fabulous idea. Um, but when I spoke to him about it, he was like, no, we don't do country because there's too much country around here. But I can kind of see where he's coming from because there really is a lot of venues that'll take country singers versus venues that'll take heavy metal or venues that'll take rap. There, It's harder to find heavy metal venues in rap venues. It just is. So I for, think, I think what he was trying to say is just that I like to represent that more because it's harder for them to find venues. You're right. I play country music and no one wants to book us. <laughs> really? Well, you're going in the wrong <laughs> area. Except for the metal places. But <laughs> also, <laughs> too, do you have a clean set list? Because I happen to know your music, and some of it's not really appropriate. For some kids. of it. Some That's a of factor. It. That's a factor for why, um, you know, some people might not include you. And why most music sucks so hard. <laughs> It's the thing that I love about Dank the most. 
Yes. Only pussies call the cops. Get off my ass. Get on my dick. I mean, kindergarten oh, teacher. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, we got like, like every pop world. artist is flipping the bird on every fucking picture. Is what Hank's saying really that offensive? <laughs> Some of it. <laughs> Really? Is it really the? Well, I mean, think like about the... your. You got to think about your audience. I mean, some. Okay, so like, if you're talking to the stockyards, I mean, you should have Fiddly McNasties. They'll let you play there. Have you tried? Yeah. We played there once, and that was the last time. <laughs> <laughs> tell me more. Tell me more. Hey, man, I I don't I don't uh, uh, fault any of. Uh, these people. Oh, we, we talk about uh, fucked up things. What can you do? But uh, you know, it's up to uh, y'all uh, to realize that uh, weird people should play at your goddamn venue. <laughs> yeah. I think and it depends on the that. crowd, though. Like, if you're going for a family scene. You know, What's the crowd, the crowd, the crowd is going to come to whatever is popular. And what is making shit popular is morons saying that uh, Beyonce is popular. Oh, God. And all this kind of stupid fucking shit. But really, when people come and see Dank, uh, people who never even heard of us, they go, God, that was fucked up, man. I want to see that again. I want to come see that again. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Hey, and I I'm love one of you those guys. Yeah. I've like, had you I, guys on. I've had you guys on more than one show of mine, but it just has to, you know, do with, uh, you know, what crowd are you trying to? No, we're, we're please, talking about you know money. I mean? money. We're talking about money or fucking. Do we want to hear a cool band? Yeah. We, no, we want money. Yeah. I tell you what, and money has never been a factor for me because local. Local support is what it is, you know. There's not really money in it. In fact, I spend more money on this shit than anything else that I have bills for, you know what I mean? But it's all about what you care about, what you're passionate about, what you want to represent. I love you guys because you're authentic and you're just you. There's no one else out there like Dank. It's just not. Dude, Hank's Hank got a song called Sloppy Red Velvet Cake, and you got to guess what that was about. Uh, he sang it for the bassist for uh, Dirty Irby and the Plow Kings, and the dude straight up vomited from the lyrical content. So if you too would like to vomit while watching Dank, come on out Saturday, May the 11th. <laughs> Plug! For authentic, uh, hardcore country music. That's right. Unapologetic. Hey, uh, Al, yeah. um, uh, make a question for PZs in the chat room. Okay, thank you. Beyonce got to go. She ain't no cowgirl. And uh, are you on YouTube, Megan? There's your question. I think I got some shit on YouTube, but it's um, it's mostly like promotional shit or... You know, pre former shows that we've done, he'll really throw down stuff. Do you, you have a partner? Or or you but it would be under, it's also Megan Moshpit. Same thing. Megan, Mo Megan Posh Moshpit. Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. potatoes. <laughs> Is it Megan? Do you do this? That's just what uh, PGA calls me when all? I get too much of a pull. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you do this all on your own, Megan? Or do you have a partner or a group of people? You know what? It's like a community. Like, um, I started it, obviously, on my own, but with other people. And those people have just stayed in the journey. Like, we're just trucking along. You know, like, this is our once a year good time that we've just built upon. And it is what it is now. And like we're just going along with it. We're gonna keep on riding that out, you know. 
uh, if you could have your druthers, would you just move up to bigger and better venues, or would you have more shows? I want to stay. Okay, I I grew up in Weatherford, and I love the Brazos River, and I love rivers, and I'm from Texas, and like traditionally, that's like a Texas thing, just having like a good time on the river. Like, um, for me, speaking of growing up, good time in the river and the bedroom. It kind of just started off as that, and like that's how I wanted to stay. It's like, <laughs> oh my goodness! This this is a baby Megan mosh pit that I found on YouTube. Are you sure? Too small to tell. Right, Where the fuck is that? <laughs> I just saw it. I was like, from oh, I gotta play some of this. From Jam Rooms Unknown. Who <laughs> love it. No talent. But you know, my this whole thing for me just started as loving my friends, you know, and loving local artists and just having a good time. This is just a party. It's just a party on the river and I happen to be funding it. So y'all come on. <laughs> Planning so, on it. So you w would you rather have more shows throughout the year or just make the one show bigger and bigger every year? Once I move back to Texas, I do intend on being more heavily involved in the scene. And, uh, you know, when I come through town, I try to, like, represent as many people as I can and go out to the shows locally and see as many people as I can. But, you know, as a mother with a full-time job and, you know... It's hard to do that. And plus, I live in California. But if I was going to be out, I would prefer to be out in Texas. Texas represent. Texas metal. Texas fucking thrash. Texas everything. Hey, you know, where, do you, where do you live in California? Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa. I've been there. Costa Mesa is awesome, dude. Oh, hey. I've never been to California. I, I, lived, I lived in Costa Mesa before. I lived in Costa Mesa. I lived in Anaheim. I lived in Santa Ana. Yeah. No, he's talking about living on the streets of Costa Mesa, but if you're going to be living on the streets, that's you know the best what? That's place a to common be. thing around here. It's a common thing. The weather's better here. That's what my old man says. He's like, well, if you're going to be homeless, be homeless in California. Yeah. All right. So my dad lives in that's San Diego. And so, you know, we go and visit him often. And the homeless people in San Diego have it fucking badass, man. They got it made, right? Dude, the, it's not. Uh, they have like they all have skin cancer and shit. But like, <laughs> they're all like they they're looking time. burnt as shit. <laughs> yeah, they're having a good time. Except for like, like in, uh, or so my dad, San Diego. So, have you ever been like a uh, downtown San Diego? Yeah. That's where like the really gross people live. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just visit it. You know, we go down there to go to that, what's that, Balboa Park or whatever it is in the downtown yeah. area. Yeah. With like the market and stuff. It's fun yeah. to go there. There you know what we went there. Uh, my son was still nursing, but he was already talking. Okay. All right. Um, and then we we're looking up and there's all those statues on the walls of like ladies with their boobies out. And yeah. my son was like, Mommy, it's night nights. Oh my That's goodness. There's night nights everywhere in that Balboa Park. I'm telling you, it's all titties. Like tit yeah, tits are cool. Okay, we're on our way to California. See you soon, Johnny. I hope to see I you soon, too. Park Richard. was a dog park. Hi, John. Yeah. That's right. Outlaw, Outlaw, Jamie, are you ready for I'll, a Sammy I'll, I'll kid? You guys need to, all four of these guys need to come to California. Yeah, Balboa right. Park. Hey, I, I'm against not all, there. Again, so we got to, you know what we got to do, Megan? We got to find these guys a home here to play, to play out here. Listen, y'all need to go to the doll hut. Okay, Anaheim, Doll Hut, Anaheim. It is a fun place. It gives me like oh, curtain wow. club vibes, man. I love that place. Is that in Disney Disneyland? 
It's uh no, it's not really near. It's not that near Disneyland. It's like down the highway a little, off the four hundred five. But it, it's called the Doll Hut Anaheim, and they're good people. It's just a little beer hut that. It's real small though. Like I said, it, it's like Reno's or like Turn Club Bob's. Man, all right, Dude. Doll Hut, here we come, and we're bringing Dank Hardcore. Bring country. it. Blow your brains out. All right, welcome to the show, everybody. Sammy Kid from Hi, Sammy. Mean Mona Hi. Scooter. Hey. Hey, guys. Welcome to the party, Ooh. Sammy. Thank, thank you very much for joining us. We were just discussing uh, San Diego. Uh, have you ever been to California? Uh, yeah, we've uh, toured out there a couple times. We're going to go back this summer. Cool. That's so awesome. Yeah, I was just about to tell Megan, uh, we went to the bar that they filmed that one scene in Top Gun, and we were like, dude, the bar is like three feet from the wall. So it's like, how did they fit a film crew in there to film all of Tom Cruise's teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sammy, say hi to Johnny Yarborough, Johnny TV, and hey, Johnny. Megan Mosh Pit. Two hey, people Megan. you're going to want to look up on your California tour. Awesome. Will do. Yes. For, for those that are not in the know, Mean Motor Scooter is a fantastic band. Uh, their video slacker is absolutely awesome. Like a, a total mind meld do, do, doppelganger. And it's a great song as well, man. So that's really cool. And they just released a new album uh, a month ago, less than a month ago. Uh, yeah, we released it around March 8th. Um, got about 13 tracks called Daydreamer. Very cool, very cool. You're featured in uh, KXT and uh, Dallas Observer. So, no slouch, everybody. There, there it is, the Observer. Yes. Daydreamer. Very cool. Uh, so, how has the response been to the new album, brother? Uh, pretty good. Um, it's gotten some pretty good reviews so far, and um, everybody seems to really like it. Seen a lot of new faces at shows. So, that's always good. Always good. Onward and upward, as they say. And I, uh, apparently it's been four years since your last album. So what you been up to in this last uh, four years? Um, well, we've put out a couple of EPs and uh, a few singles. But um, just trying to, after the pandemic, like, our, our whole catalog of shows got canceled. And so we just kind of went into the studio and uh, worked on what we had. And I think as far as putting out another album, um, it seems like the way people listen to music more recently has kind of changed. It seems like the popular thing to do is put out singles, but I really wanted to put out another album. So, um, it just took some time to find out what I wanted to do and how I wanted to put it out and all that. I, wanted, I knew I wanted to do something different. may not appreciate a full album, but I know I do, and I know everybody on this panel appreciates a full album. So thank you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I knew there would be plenty of people that would definitely appreciate a full album. Um, and I guess more or less I just wanted to do it for myself, do it for, you know, the reasons that I was influenced to start playing music and something that if I had listened to when I was a teenager, I would have been uh, inspired by. That's awesome. That's what's up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, currently we have on uh, Megan. Ma oh, Megan's gone. All right. Well, Too much it was good refill. talking to you, Megan. I, I guess she needed more ice in whatever she was drinking. <laughs> and and Johnny looks like he's asleep. <laughs> All right. Typical Wednesday. Very cool. Oh, man. Uh, so uh, tell me about yourself. Uh, Sammy, uh, 
We've, uh, we've never met, uh, although I think maybe we may have played together, uh, me and Motor Scooter and Dank. Uh, we may have played a show, I don't know, like before the pandemic. Uh, a lot of these years like run together because I'm old and I drink. Uh, so what what is an awesome Mean Motor Scooter sh uh, concert like? G give us the deets. Um, I guess it just depends on my mood. Uh, it can go from something that you, you would expect to hear from the record, or it can just, depending on how it goes, it, I, some things may get thrown around. Uh, it's uh, it's all it's usually a lot of fun though. Either way, um, I, don't, I don't know how I describe it, but it's. It's definitely loud. <laughs> Do you like to confuse and disorient your fans? Is that it? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just I mean, there, and, uh, I can remember like early Grotto days, we would be too loud and it would kind of drive everybody outside and then they'd hear it better from not even being in the building. So we, we turned it down a little bit, but yeah, no, we just, I don't know. It's just very much what the mood is like at the time, I guess. Man, RIP Grotto. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, Grotto was a fantastic venue. Didn't last very long, but it was a great hole-in-the-wall venue to see really good, vital music. That you just, you know, they're, they're closing left and right, and it's really, really sad because we need more venues like Grotto and uh, and you know, but tulips and magnolia, you know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I keep hearing from these venue owners that, uh, due to, you know, there's like something like 40,000 people coming in the city every month. And so the rent's going up and up and up. And even though a lot of these places have a lot of patrons and, you know, shows are still packed and everything, they just can't keep up with the rent. So we watch Lola's go, and then mass went replaced by cicada but i've heard even there even though they're you know like i said having tons of people coming in they're still having trouble keeping up with the rent so hopefully uh that changes or we get some new venues or something uh as far as i know tulips is doing pretty well uh, i just talked to jason not long ago and he showed me some expansions they're going to be doing some new rooms and stuff so looking forward to that yeah, and even uh, downtown uh, Arlington, they're they're uh, going to totally level the Lincoln Square and build up from there some maybe some new venues might open up over there, which is totally cool because even though there was a uh, Bar Louis over there, if you've been there more than three times, you realize all of it is rehearsed. And, uh, you know, the spontaneity is uh, part of the, the fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the Division Brewery over there is a lot of fun. Um, Sunshine Bar, Caves, Arlington has some good spots. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I'm not trying to be depressing about all these uh, venues that are closing down. We are here to be uplifting to the people that are actually up late doing drugs on a Wednesday night. So I want yeah. you to tell me, my friend Sammy Kidd, uh, tell me about me and Motor Scooter. Tell, uh, tell the, the humble origins, how you had to fight off elephants to get to where you are now. Uh, well, we just start. We started in 2015, um, and I guess we just set out to play as many shows as we could, as often as we could, for as long as we could, and uh, met a lot of cool people that way. Um, tried not to turn anything down so long as uh, we were all available. I think we got it to just about a show every weekend for a couple of years. And then uh, it was a show at least every other weekend for a while. And then um, it kind of slowed down after the pandemic. But um, that was a lot of fun. And I guess that was a good way for us to meet people and meet all the venue owners and meet the bands we like to play with so 
Yeah. Uh, when you uh, pl- when you play these shows with other ven- uh, with other bands, do you prefer like a streamlined sound, or do you prefer like all different kinds of genres? Oh yeah, I'm not picky about genres at all. Um, I like pretty much everything, uh, just so long as it's good, I guess. <laughs> but <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. Like when I'm picking shows for a lineup, I don't really do it by genre or like. You know, if, if this band's a pop band or if this band's a loud band, um, a lot of times they have a lot of the same fans anyway. So, do you do any research on the bands, like listen to the music prior to saying yes? Or yeah, um, I try to at least go to one show beforehand. I don't always get to do that, but I definitely listen to their music and uh, get to get to know their audience, who they're engaging with. Yeah, because that'll be your audience too. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> you know, are there any bands that you use? My manners. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. What I was going to say. No, no, no. Uh, we, we need to do a quick introduction. Uh, Sammy, uh, from the top to the bottom, we've got Ariel from Against All Oz. They're a fantastic metal band out of Forney. Uh, down below is uh, Ricky Warden. He used to be uh, Mr. Freak in the Freak Show and also me and my dead friends and currently a solo artist, podcaster, mm. and wonderful father. Uh, right in the middle, we've got Hank, who is the lead singer guitarist for the country punk band Dank, and also bassist for the band Grain way back in the day. Uh, I'm Dave. I'm the one that you've been talking to. Uh, you're never going to see my actual face because that's part of the fun. And down at the bottom, we have Johnny TV, who is a uh, podcaster and a wonderful conveyor of all things that are pop. Awesome. Well, good to meet you guys. Likewise. The pleasure is all ours. Uh, Ariel, if I stepped on your toes, I am so nice sorry. Nice to meet you, bro. Were you about to go in? <laughs> yes, you stepped on my toes, Dave. Mm-hmm. No, um, so you were talking about bands and everything that you've met. Do you currently still play or tour with any bands um, that you have started with in, in y'all's um, beginnings? Uh, with touring with bands, it's kind of hard. Um Generally, if the band has like a really good national presence, then we would gladly open for them. Uh, the first few tours we did were with the Darts, were which are like a really good garage rock band. Um, they're mostly touring in Europe now. But as far as touring with other local bands, um, it's it's more difficult. Uh, you really want either to tour by yourself or tour with someone who has that kind of presence, at least in my experience, unless you're doing like something short and calculated. But, um, we, we've met a lot of other bands from other States and around the West coast, um, while we're on tour that have been a lot of fun and really cool. I don't think we've toured with a band that we didn't like. Um, all of them are really great. Uh, BBC's, uh, The Atom Age. Um, there was one other from France that I'm drawing a blank on. But yeah, they were all really good. It's dope. I remember one time we were on tour in uh, California and we ended up at the Chateau Marmont and we were we had a bungalow and then across the way, the Filthy Skanks had a bungalow as well. So we we just uh, really we, we just kind of clowned on their accent, but we we completely respected what they had going on as well. I don't know if Very anybody cool. out there remembers the fil- the filthy skanks, but they were an amazing punk band from um, I want to say Australia. Oh, Red, nice! Red I'll have to check them out. Uh, I, I gotta say, listening to you and and to me, Motor Scooter, you remind me a lot of Sniper Sixty Six. They're out of Austin. Have you all ever played uh, with that band? No, I haven't heard of them, but I'll definitely look them up. Sniper Sixty Six out of Austin. Yeah, yeah, Sounds yeah. Cool. they're uh, the lead singer. Yeah, Dylan Close. He uh, we went to high school together. They have a very like uh, early underground rancid feel. So I I, I thought that. <laughs> Y'all would definitely match well together. Well, um, all right, David Jarvis, with that, I think it's time we listen to this song, Slacker, so we and our viewers can get a good taste of mean motor scooter music. Oh, 
Yeah. All right, cool. I'm not trying to overhype this, but this is a really good video. Hype, hype, Thank hype. you. Because I said it, you heard it, not forget it, cause there's nothing to do. You better live it and love it. There's no one else to love it. If you said then I've got it, what is something to do? You gotta breathe it, you feed it, you kill it and you eat it. You got everything you need, and now there's nothing to do. You gotta plan it, you prove it, you devour it, consume it, you did it, cause you knew it, and there's nothing to do. Now I'm getting bored. I'm about to claw out my skin. That's fuzzy. Hey. Coffee Pop Films is great. How long did that video take to make? Uh, I think we shot it in two days, and editing took a little bit while because they were pretty busy. But I think we got it out about a month or so later. Yeah, it looked like a pretty. It was like spot on to everything that you said. <laughs> that little little moment, I like that. That was really cool. Thank you. Did you, uh, was that your idea or did they help you? Uh, yeah, I pretty much, I just told them the gist that I wanted to do something like a doppelganger kind of theme and um, they just did the rest. They came up with all the little funny bits and put it together. Oh man, I, I totally thought that y'all were like an English band. <laughs> <laughs> what gave you that impression? It did not sound like they were like English. I, that's not the first time I've heard that. Um, I don't, I don't know what bands I listen to that that would come through that way. But I, I, it makes sense. Garage rock is pretty popular in England, so <laughs> that's where Dirty Water was based out of the label that put out our first record. Yeah. Now it's a cool ass fucking song, man. Thank yeah, you. I think so. That just goes to show that you can put a new spin on an old trick, man. I enjoyed that. Yep. Um, and we put out um, one more video for the new record also. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen that one yet, but it's pretty fun as well. Let's hear it. What's it called? Uh, it's called I Don't Know Why. I thought you were about to say I don't Y'all know. Y'all talk for a minute. <laughs> I'll look it up. <laughs> What was the name of that song again? <laughs> uh, I don't know why. Oh, man. But no, the, the, the cool thing about Slacker, it, 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 Slacker reminds me a lot of uh, that movie Enemy with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, where it's about, uh, you know, doppelgangers of, of 
completely separate uh, di divergent uh, meetings that somehow come together and just are just culture shocked by each other. And I, I thought okay. I captured that very well. That's cool. I have to check that out. They say you have what, like at least three doppelgangers out there in the world. I have yeah. heard that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I have more than that because yeah. a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, you look like so and so. And I go, you're the 15th person that told me that I looked like somebody today. So there's either like a lot of generic white girls out there with purple hair or you just think that everybody with purple hair looks like each other. <laughs> well, you know, all Kelly Clarkson fans look alike. I love Kelly Clarkson. They, they never, <laughs> they never come in. I will. Uh, I'll never be able to meet her because I'll just cry in front of her the entire time. I have excitement. And, and she will lick the tears off of your face. She will sing one of my songs she, one day. That's how she keeps her power. <laughs> Licking the tears off of people who are happy to see her. That's why she does yeah, meet and greets. Like, She's like Cartman, you know, just licking the tears up of Scott Tenneman's face. Uh. Uh. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Marinated that one for a while. No. <laughs> no? no. Oh, darn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ariel. Ariel. Hank. Uh, uh, what are you doing? What am I doing? Yeah. I'm hanging out in my house. Do you have to go to work tomorrow? Yes. What time? Always work. I have to get up at five. I have to be there at eight. Ugh. It sucks. You wake up at five to get there at eight? Yeah, it's like a 35 minute drive, but I like to sit in silence for I know this sounds so stupid, but I like to give myself some time by myself in the morning before I deal uh, with people. I do the same thing. I get uh I have to open my shop at nine, but I get there at eight, so I can, oh, fucking, fucking, fuck, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, take a shit. Nope. All this time. <laughs> well, that's involved too at some point, I guess. Hey, I, I have to like for that morning movement is very important. You don't want to have to <laughs> shit at work. No, I shit at work all the time, but like uh, the first shit is, you got it. Like that first shit. You know that first shit. <laughs> it's important. It's important. Going I do know that first shit. My my office is on the road, so that's why I like to take mine at home. No, no, no. but you're in control of your first, scene there. The at your work. Obviously at home. home, but like once you get to work, you got that other shit. Okay, in the gotcha. Home. Actually, it's bad yeah, if you don't crap multiple times a day. Yeah, of course. You got a shit. Multiple times. I work in the healthcare Ooh. field, so yeah, these friends. are not odd conversations for me right now. It's another day. Yeah. Another day. Uh, well, Megan is slowly uh, getting herself uh, situated. Uh, but uh, Sammy, uh, on mute down there at the bottom, that's Megan Moshpit. She is hosting the Float Fest down in uh, Mineral Wells uh, in May. It's an annual event where people float the river and listen to bands all day, and it's a wonderful event, and it would be really cool if y'all uh, could maybe make it the next year or the year after. It's always uh, yeah, it's great fun, fun and, and, and she loves the local scene and does everything she can to champion it, and for that, we That's love you. Right. Megan. Nice. Definitely That's have to right. check that out. Did you hear the song, Megan? No, unfortunately, I was refilling and refurbishing. And <laughs> well, that's all the good reason, enough reason you know to what? play another song. Do y'all want to hear? Yes. The, I don't I know. Do. You better believe it. Yes. All right. I said no. I'm Would you still play it? There. Okay, here we go. With I don't know why, mean motor scooter. Okay. Economic 
Love it already. Get a snack. Awesome, awesome. Dude, that reminds me of that movie, A Night of the Demons, with uh, Linnea Quigley back in, uh, like, 1990. That's uh, fantastic. Very great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to do something like Jennifer's Body, where we uh, all get murdered. <laughs> hey, 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 Outlaw, check, hey, Outlaw, check the chat room out, Outlaw. For this, yeah, dude, uh, what's great, dude? I, I gotta say, uh, what's great, uh, Jen, Jen, Jennifer's body it got a terrible uh, uh, reputation when it came out because they got the theatrical version. But if anybody is actually interested, the unrated version of Jennifer's body is what you need to check out. That is a fantastic mm -hmm. movie. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny Yarbrough. Appreciate you, man. Oh, my, my God. Hey, brother, I got to go, man, okay? I got to go. See you later. I love you. I love you, too, man. Okay, Good night. Be safe, all right? Take it easy. All right, brother. I'll see, all, I'll see you again. Bye. Good to meet you. Yes, sir. Nice to meet you, bro. Sammy, how long has y'all been long, camping together? Um, I think we're coming up on nine years now. Is same all original members, or did you have a few um, line of changes? Yeah, we've had a few. Um, Joe, the bass player, and 
the audio engineer. He and I have been the core members. Um, and then we had a new drummer recently, Mike. And um, we used to have a keyboard player, but uh, she left. So we got a lead guitar player. He's going to do some keys as well, but he's just doing lead guitar. That's cool. What's the hardest part of keeping those band together? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I guess people grow apart or what they, you know, like to do, or, you know, people have kids, people have yep. life changes, things happen. But um, all in all, I guess, just so long as everybody's excited about what we're doing and where we're going, it's, it's pretty, pretty easy. Yeah. Do you all have other jobs outside of music? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, Joe, I think is just doing the audio engineering right now, but he was working for a long time as a project manager. And I know Mike works for Coke and will, I forget what will does, but yeah. Very cool. How often do you yeah, are cool. able uh, to get together? Uh, how often do we get together? Mm -hmm. um, like once a week, I'd say. Nice. Go ahead, Dave. Well, I was going to say, uh, they actually took a novel approach with this last album because they did multiple release shows. Uh, did that work out in your favor, do you think? Yeah, I do think so. Um, we've over the years we played so many shows in fort worth and we kind of just uh wanted to make sure that everybody from all corners of the metroplex could come out and see the shows yeah uh the the sound that you have um have you found much success in dallas because you would think that a band that sounds like you would do well in Dallas, but unfortunately over the years I've noticed uh, punk bands don't really do well in Dallas. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe you've broken the mold. Um, I mean, we've definitely done okay in Dallas. I think most of our listeners on like Spotify and streaming and all that are actually from Dallas. Um, but as far as like nominations and, uh, things like that, like mentions. Uh, I think we've only been nominated one time for an e for the TV Baby EP in 2019, but we still get a lot of like the, I know a few writers for different places out of Dallas that still throw us a bone every once in a while, so that's nice. Well, I, I definitely say that you definitely deserve DAPS because you have been successful in Denton and outside of Denton, which most bands are not. They're either one or the other. So mad props to that. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think it really just mostly depends on where you're playing most of your shows. So I think just the fact that we mostly were playing in Fort Worth for the first five years or so. Um, but then once we started uh, touring, playing around more, uh, we started focusing more on Dallas and then. Now when you toured, is it like uh, four days out of a week or is it like a full month or a full two month type of deal? Um, the, sh the first tour I think was like four or five days and then they, progressively got a little bit longer each time i think the longest one we did was about two weeks but anywhere from like a few days to a couple weeks have y'all had uh uh like really amazing shows in places that you wouldn't expect like you know arizona or you know arkansas or whatever um yeah i, I we got to meet um one of the guys from the Meat Puppets, his girlfriend was playing the show when we were at the Phoenix Crescent Ballroom. And that was cool. Um, playing in San Francisco was a lot of fun. 
I got to meet uh, Jello Biafra and uh, a couple other really cool people. Um, I think that's the only two that really, really stick out. Uh, Denver was a lot of fun. Uh, Nash or Memphis was fun. Um, yeah, they were, they were all pretty good. Uh, Boise was a little bit dead that night, but other than that, <laughs> it was pretty fun. Hey, these things happen, but not everybody gets to meet Jello Biafra. Tell me about that. That must have been awesome. Oh, yeah. I, I've i always loved the Dead Kennedys a lot. Um, he was really, really cool guy. Um, he, You can tell he has a appreciation for vinyl and that kind of thing um, it was neat to hang out with them and just to talk to them it was a holiday in cambodia <laughs> yeah he's definitely always like the center of the room wherever he's at <laughs> he's a lot of fun shit i'd have voted for him he ran for like the mayor <laughs> of san francisco i think that one time yeah i saw that in uh some kind of DVD of all their live shows or something. When I was a kid, that was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what does Mean Motor Scooter have on the horizon? What What is twenty twenty four looking like for y'all? Um, mostly we're just focusing on getting back on the road again. Uh, I think we it starts September sixth, and we'll just run up the west coast and back again but um do you guys already I've, have gigs out here on the west coast um i will have to talk to the booking manager about what's booked all i know is he's booking it right now and those are it starts on the 6th and i think it ends on the 15th but other than that i don't have all the details yet right on well let but, me know if you guys need any help i'm out absolutely. here I only yeah. have one show. I like you. I only do one show a year these days, but I used to do a lot of shows. But anything that y'all need help with, let me know. I'm out here on the West Coast already. I'll go do some footwork for you. Oh, let me know awesome. the Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, Megan is most definitely an ally. Nice. <laughs> So y'all have like really cool jobs that just let you take off for like two weeks at a time. That's really cool, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we ha that I hasn't really been an issue. When you go on tour, is it just the band, or do you have you know roadies, or does your booking agent come along with you? Um, the last time we went, it was just us. Um, the time that we played the more the bigger shows with the darts, uh, we had some people helping with gear and stuff like that but mostly it's just us kitty kitty that's gatsby Gatsby. gatsby that's a great name for a cat good lord so cute. Awesome. <laughs> i can picture him with a uh, mustache <laughs> i could too <laughs> Uh, on these uh, tour dates, do you have contracts, or is it handshakes, or is it half and half? Um, I think the only real deal is just that our booking manager gets a percentage, but he handles all that stuff. So, oh, dude, you're gonna get fucked in. Oh no! <laughs> is that you, Hank? Have you ever had to? Have you ever had to flex some muscle to get paid? No, no. Okay, no. good. Well, that's good. 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 I guess Generally it depends on who your booking manager is. If your booking manager has your best interests at heart, then you're good. Yeah. If not, yeah. then you're like Selena and you're going to fucking get out there and do all your shit and they're going to make all the money. But if you have a good booking agent that cares about you, cares about how you're doing, then they're going to do a better job for you. Yeah, we haven't had any issues. He's a real good dude. Um, That's amazing. He doesn't take too much. The to like it generally breaks even at the end, and we don't have to pay any money to go on the road or anything. Like That's that. amazing. So, good. 
Good. Hopefully, uh, we'll have enough. That shit is hard work too. Coming from a booking, I, that shit is hard work because oh, yeah. to make that shit fall together like that, it is hard work. So props. I don't know who your booking agent is, but I feel uh, them. <laughs> yeah, I know he's great. I, I remember. <laughs> I remember when we were on tour and we played in Merced, California, and we just had a handshake agreement and they weren't going to pay us. So what we did was we had our road manager talk to him. He said, hey, uh, we can't pay you. So then we had our road manager come back with our roadie, who was a uh, toothless, uh, <laughs> real uh, gung ho redneck dude. Uh, this not gonna pay us. So what we did was we kept coming back to the guy that was supposed to pay <laughs> us with another member and another member until eventually he was basically surrounded and he was forced to pay us. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh, wow! Jeez. Gotta get it. Get it. However you get it. <laughs> did your booking agent find you, or did you reach out to them? Um, we met him when we got to go on our first tour with the darts. He was working for them and I think he was affiliated with their label dirty water. And, uh, we just ended up being good friends. Um, and I've met a couple of the other people they had booking for them, but for whatever reason, he just stuck around and always liked us. So we just kept working with him. That's great. I only ask because I book all of our shows and I don't oh, want to yeah. be the only one. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. It's rough. <laughs> True. That's cool. Is, is there a particular part of the country that you've always done well at, at outside of Texas? Um, San Francisco seems to be a really good spot for us. Um, I don't, we haven't played a bad show there yet. Um, we haven't really branched out elsewhere, like to the East coast yet. So I'm interested in seeing how that would go. Florida. Florida. Yeah, that is one of the spots we want to go to. Um, Alabama. but other than that, um, Vegas was cool. Right. Um, Denver, but yeah, mostly just West coast. Well, I will say when we went on tour on the East Coast, uh, the friendliest state was North Carolina. We played four, oh, really? uh, si played four cities in North Carolina, and they were just not only friendly, but very receptive and very into just anything, anything outside of the state they were all about. So uh, I would definitely suggest that. Okay, nice. Yeah, we'll definitely look into that. I feel like the places that are kind of maybe a little more secluded from what's going on, they tend to have some really awesome people there that really enjoy live music and don't get to see enough of it. So desperate for the vibe. Mm -hmm. And I, I will say this, a, a surprising punk scene, Salt Lake City. Salt Lake oh, City yeah, actually has a right very on. surprising, it's a very surprising punk scene that is very receptive and and if you impress them you will have fans for life i have heard you're not the first person to tell me that we we definitely need to go out to salt lake that would be a lot of fun punk mormons <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah i'm sure the religious oppression is enough to the point where people sure are just a motherfucker backslider yeah. punk rock <laughs> Now, I will say that when we played there, we were warned, do not smoke cigarettes in front of people because there are yeah. gangs of young people that will actually beat the crap out of you. If the you liberals will cigarettes. freak the fuck out. Don't do it. Oh. <laughs> now, now, now I'm, speaking, wild. I'm speaking about a tour that I was on in 2006. Maybe things have changed. But just in case, if any of y'all are cigarette smokers, just be careful. I care about you. <laughs> Luckily, I quit when my son was born, but I still smoke occasionally when I'm super pissed or if I'm drunk. <laughs> yeah, I think we all switched to vape, so. <laughs> all right, is everybody ready for this weekly concert calendar? Do y'all have any shows coming up, Sammy Kid? 
Joining us for the concert calendar tonight, everybody say hi to Mike Lambert. Hi, Mike Lambert. Hey, Mikey. Yo, yo. What's up, everyone? I I cannot put into words how much I love Mike Lambert. He is just one of the most wonderful people in the world. Uh, if you are able to work with him in any capacity, please do, because he is just such a wonderful person, man. Well, I appreciate that, Dave. I feel the same way about you, man. <laughs> Uh, Lovely. Yeah. Don't y'all have a new we, movie coming out? We do. It's actually coming out. Hopefully, it's coming out in the middle of May to coincide with my next EP. Uh, it is called Free Rider X Extential, and uh, we are working out the kinks as we speak. Uh, he did my last short film, which was uh, Escape from the Dream System. Uh, so which we premiered to, here uh, on Blow Your Brains Out was a beautiful thing. That, thank you very thank you. much for that, both of you. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, Sammy, if you're looking for a new music video director, uh, Mike is the man. He has done amazing work with us, with Lustic Drug, and wonderful uh, symphony stuff for the, uh, is the Fort Worth Symphony. Garland. Uh, Mesquite. Garland. Mes okay. I was close. It's Mesquite. Oh, Mesquite. Sorry. Yeah. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, Sammy, before we move into the concert calendar of other bands, how about uh, Mean Motor Scooter? Do y'all have any shows coming up? Yeah, Mom. Uh, yeah, they're a little far out what we have booked right now. Let me check my calendar. I know we got... Well, that's okay. You can come back on. We do this uh, weekly concert calendar every Wednesday at 9.30, about 9.30 to 10 p.m. roughly. And you are invited and enc encouraged to come on and promote your shows. Yeah. Well, uh, you've anytime got, um, you want to come back on. Okay, great. Um, yeah, right now it's just May 5th at um, Rubber Gloves. Cinco de Drinko. You know, we don't advertise enough Denton shows. I yeah. it's, 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 it's a damn shame because there seems to be a disconnect between Denton and the rest of North Texas. And I don't think that that is right. I think that we should all share because sharing is caring. Well, it's also challenging just to keep up with everything. And so if any venues in Denton or surrounding Dallas-Fort Worth areas or bands want to make sure that we talk about their shows and promote their shows, uh, I'm going to start posting on the Blow Your Brains Out group page to post your flyers here to make sure that we talk about them on the show. Yeah, not everything's listed as an event, and so you have to really search for it because some people only post on their band page or they only post on venue pages, but you're sifting through like a lot because they, they have shows planned out three months in advance. That flyer that's for this month was posted like way back when. So that's what's happening. We don't mind doing it right now. Ariel and myself, we had to go to all the different band pages, all the different venues, because the venues don't post all the flyers. The bands don't post all the flyers. You know, so it's a lot of time just finding the flyers to share. We don't mind doing it. We're happy to do it. It's part of the service that we provide right here and blow your brains out. But if you want to make sure that your band's shows are being talked about, you can do two things. Just post the flyer in the group page. I'll pull it from there that easy. We will talk about it. And then also just hit me up at outlawvideotv at gmail.com. I'll send you the link if you're a local band, promoter, or venue, and you are welcome and encouraged to join us here on Blow Your Brains Out from 9.30 to 10 to promote local music and entertainment. Heck yeah. And also, if you are not able to get a hold of Ricky or Ariel, Hit me up, David Jarvis at hotmail.com. I am happy and proud to promote you, most especially if you are outside of said designated area. 
That is true because David Jarvis uh, has a lot more, um, does a lot more with the Blow Your Brains Out group page than the other, than me or Ariel. It's my pleasure and honor. Uh, honestly, uh, spending every Wednesday with y'all is uh, part of the greatest part of uh, my life. I'll be Aww. honest. It's so fucking heart. Cool. <laughs> oh, you're not on camera. I can't make a heart. All right, so there it is, Mike Lambert. I want to thank you and Rivet Head very much for being a part of this second Blow Your Brains Out show. It's going to be a free show at Diamond Gym on Saturday, May the 11th. So coming up here in another month with The Argonaut, Rivet Head, Warhog, Dank, and Hedonistic Punk Vatos. Another amazing lineup. If y'all were pretty. not at the last free Blow Your Brains Out show at Diamond Gems, it was amazing. It was a barn burner. We had people just spilling out into the front. So please get there early and stay late because it is an event. And drink a lot. Yeah. The drink prices are good. They're not overpriced drinks, free parking. Dude, the wow. drink prices are phenomenal. Like, you can literally get wasted off of $10. Yeah, I mean, that's that's why I used to always go to Diamond Gym, so it's it's nice to see shows there again. Um, it seemed like there was a pause there for a bit, but that, that happens, obviously, pandemic stuff. But, yeah, the, this show is going to be awesome. I, I uh, We were looking forward to actually booking a show at Diamond Gyms, and – when Rick, you know, hit me up about, you know, doing this and, uh, and then seeing Dank and then, yeah, Warhog and the, the Argonaut and, uh, you know, uh, hedonistic punk, punk, hedonistic, punk, hedonistic punk photos. Th those, so that's, that, those are, got, I don't know who that is, but that's a new band. I'm looking forward to seeing them too, but I, I'm just thrilled to be a part of this. This is a, you know, badass show lineup. So, and you guys do, doing this, this is just a badass package. So. I'm not going to lie. If we Very do true. a third one of these, I think that Mean Motor Scooter would fit perfectly into the lineup of bands that Blow Your Brains Out always lines up. Ricky always makes amazing fucking shows up at Diamond Jams. I, I know we're, we're still early in the process, but the last show was so amazing, and each band had their own style, and it, it, it was just a great mix of sounds, and this looks like it's going to be about the same. So... Uh, mean Motor Scooter, if y'all ain't busy uh, sometime, come on out. This would be a great show to showcase your wares to the uh, Banditos. Basically, we're doing one show a month to the Banditos. Love it. Nice shout out. Um, we do one show a month there at Diamond Gems, Sammy Kid, And the next show is like June the 20th, I believe. The bands are Creeper, Coilback. And I can't remember the rest of the lineup. I'll be promoting that. Hopefully next week we'll have a flyer and an event page set up. So if you guys want to be on that, I can probably fit you on there. If not, um, we'll be doing another show in July and love to have you guys on there. Okay, cool. I'll, uh, I'll reach out. Diamond Gem Saloon is a hole in the wall. It's a pretty good size hole in the wall there in Arlington, Texas. And again, it's a free show. And uh, I can talk to you about the the little bit of pay. There's not a lot of pay, but basically what the bar does pay, I split with the bands. Nice. nice. Sounds like fun. Yeah. The idea is get your friends out because it's a free show and get them drunk and we all make a little money and have a great time. Very cool. And more than anything, we are uh, paying respect to the few live venues that are still around. That really is. I mean, obviously, uh, just like you playing a in a band, you want to get out and be able to enjoy the process of playing and playing in front of a crowd of people uh, and making some money doing a show and selling your merch and all of that. Um, so we're, we're that's what we're doing here. We're promoting Blow Your Brains Out. But tied into that is just as important to me personally is keeping a venue like Diamond Gems going. I mean, it's my favorite hole in the wall venue in all of that all Dallas Fort Worth. But I've also lived in Arlington all my life, so I kind of, you know, have a heart for this particular venue. 
but yeah, man, keeping the venues alive and giving people a, a you know a good place to go out and have a good time—that's a big part of what it's all about. Diamond Gems is a really fun place. I, I, it's been a while since I've been there, but it's it is one of my favorite like party places to go because it, it's like you know it's not like a real old saloon, but it's look it looks like a saloon. Everything about it—the bar, the, the 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 doors, the barn doors when you come in. I think and it's the, an old San Francisco ballroom. Is that what like, it is? Yeah, there used to be a, a chain of bars. There's one in, you know, there's there's several throughout Texas. And they were called Old San Francisco Steakhouse. That's what they were called. Oh, okay. Well, look, yeah. thank Did you guys so much for having me on. I got a jet, but uh, Hi, I appreciate Sammy. it a lot. Thanks for being on tonight. Have a good night. Sammy, thank it you, was Sammy a pleasure. Kid. Thank you very much. Didn't it used to be called uh, something else or like was a... a monkey something? It? it was something monkey. I can't remember what it was, though. Yeah, because Steve, uh, our, our singer guitarist, mentioned something about like he's he's gonna have a, a memory flashback because it's some old venue that he, that they played at once uh, a long time ago. Well, Harder Beat used to do their showcases there way back. We're talking twenty years ago, uh, mm -hmm. maybe longer. Harder Beat, the magazine with Linder Holler, and yeah. it was called something Monkey. I can't remember what it was called. Yeah. I tell you what, though, this is the best place to go see Dank. <laughs> you know, I mean that. I mean, I've, I've, I think my first show seeing Dank was at um, what's that place? Uh, the two, two. Uh, anyways, the one with the twister on top, the little place. But yeah, then I, I think I've, I've, we filmed uh, Dank there, and that was just a, a great place. Only, only pussies call the cops. That's uh, this the setting. Like the one I remember there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny that you say that because it's the first time I saw Dink was at Diamond Gems, and it's where I fell in love with him. Uh, it was one of my brother Jerry Elmo Jones production shows. What five, I don't know, hell, that's eight years ago or something. And uh, it was a while back. And um, you know, I, my first thought was, "No, nah, Jerry, this isn't my style of music," you know. And he said, "No, you, I, this is your kind of music. You should listen." And I listen, and I'm like, oh, okay, I can relate. Yes, this is my kind of music. <laughs> it's the soundtrack for Diamond Gems. <laughs> but, yeah, and then uh, Warhog is a, a, a badass band. Uh, we played with them uh, at O'Reilly's, and they're, they're, they're just a, a killer uh, three-piece band. Um, they're, they're looking forward to them. And then the Argonaut, uh, those guys are freaking awesome and they have got, they got a few new members or one i think a new bass player that uh is really good so he's i'm looking forward to seeing those guys and playing with them so it's gonna be a fun fun lineup for sure yeah looking i'm thinking i might need to tell diamond gems that the argonaut is going to destroy the place <laughs> <laughs> or they're, should gonna, I just wait? they're literally gonna destroy it. tell them that you know you guys got to put another show on next month don't, don't fuck it up too much <laughs> Ask for forgiveness later. Yeah, leave it intact. Clean Can it we up. just destroy it in theory, guys? Come on, we got to do another show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, comes show. From my, uh, this comes from Mike Lambert, uh, last survivor of the Nostromo. <laughs> we can play a show out the parking lot. If, yeah, we'll do that. All right, well, do you have another show or any other music you would like to tell us about here tonight, Mike? Uh, we do have one more show we got uh, added on to uh, at Trees. I'll tell you real quick. Uh, we're, we're opening for Cold and Orgy on uh, May okay. 2nd. It's a Thursday night, so that's going to be a, a killer show for sure. Um, nice. And there's two other bands, um, Horizon Theory, which is a really badass, like, uh, like a kind of a rock, heavy rock band, uh, a lot of singing, kind of blues stuff. And then uh, I, Ayatoya, I think it's like a, a female fronted uh, there it is. band. So yeah, that that's hell yeah. So that that's gonna be badass and orgy. They're 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 doing the uh, the candy ass, uh, celebrating the 25 years. I'm assuming they're gonna be doing maybe the whole album. I don't know, but that'll be badass. And we've opened up for Cold before and and seen them before, and they're just fucking killer. Um, you know, a lot band. of people may not remember this, but uh, there was a rash of pleather pants sold out of Hot Topic because of Orgy, and uh, <laughs> I was one of those uh, customers. So uh, Orgy holds a special place in my heart, 
and my bulge. Mm hmm. Bulge. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> pun, no pun intended. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> bulge is the new dope. <laughs> That's <hilarious>. Not dope. <laughs> Oh, dude. But yeah, I'm make it out. Um, it's gonna be a, gonna be a, a hell of a show. <laughs> fucking head from Bane, like his next theme song will be Bulge, Bulge, Bulge. <laughs> bulge, bulge. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love his bulge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's another way to make sure that your shows are talked about here on Blow Your Brains Out. Just hop in the chats. Anything you bring up in the chats, we're going to talk about some things a little longer than others. But this is uh, Eddie Lee of Iron Mang. Our buddies Swerve City are playing in Chill, Louisville's Battle of the Bands tomorrow, 4-4. Go vote for them. <laughs> Ariel says hi to Swerve City. He does. Great guy. Okay, they're having a little conversation over there. Hello, Lady Luck. Lady Luck is joining us from Australia, everybody. So from down Australia. under. Australia. Nice. Hey, Lady Luck. Thank you for being here, Lady Luck, for sure. Really cool to see you and, here in the chat. And, and thank you, Ray, from Hedonistic Bottos, for being a part of this as well. And and thank you, Megan. I know your battery died, but thank you so much for informing us on the Float Fest. Yeah, yeah. So, Lady Luck, encouraging everyone to hit the like. That's something I forget to do. Please do subscribe and hit the like button. By hitting the like button, you're going to help this video go out and get up in the algorithms by subscribing to our YouTube channel. You're going to definitely help our videos get better placement in search results and in just uh, suggested videos for people to watch and in the notifications. So please do subscribe. It actually does help. All right. So here's uh, Renee. This is Hedonistic Punk Vatos opening the show on May the 11th. Dang, I just got home and now I got to go. All my best to y'all. Hey, love you, man. We will see you soon. We expect you to be on guy. here. I love this podcast. Okay, just catching up. This is a Days X. Dope, dope, dope. Bulge, bulge, <laughs> bulge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Hedonist updated their website and put the show on their website. They're really thorough with their website. That's what I was telling everyone. Not a lot of people are familiar with Hedonistic Punk Bottos, but they're from the Arlington area. And they do a ton to promote. So they're really like, I mean, to open, they're the perfect fucking opening band for a Arlington show. So thank you, Renee, for everything that you guys do. Nice. Uh, badass one. Love your show, guys. And I just got to see the video of Dank at Diamond Gems, and they definitely got a cool vibe. <laughs> that badass oh, one is out of Oklahoma. So I just like to let y'all know that we have an international audience over here to blow your brains out. Need to come play some north of the river, he says. Well, throw out some uh, venue suggestions. I don't know if like two frogs might have Rivet Head. I wonder if we could put together a show like that with Rivet Head and Dank and uh, maybe Vane, maybe Iron Jaw, some bands like that that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if they would draw there in Ardmore, Oklahoma, but they would damn sure put on a killer show. Oh, yeah. Do y'all ever do shows up there, Mike? Um, we're uh, talking about getting up into Oklahoma um, at, uh, uh, was it the Railhead Saloon? We've been talking about going up there and uh, trying to do something. Um, Rivet Heads played there before in the past. Uh, I think uh, we just didn't didn't get around to it, but we're, we're talking uh, about doing something this year um, at some point before well, when it gets comes to state. Oklahoma, like North of the river, night Oklahoma city, or, you know, Tulsa, just North of the river. Uh, the first city on 35 is Ardmore. The first big city you pass the uh, casino first. And then the big, first big city you come to are decent sizes is Ardmore. Okay. But, that's where a, a place called Two Frogs is there, and then also Heritage Hall is there. And at that venue, Heritage Hall, it's a 
it's a you know it's a it's a convention center or a uh, auditorium there you go and oh, okay. like Ted Nugent plays there all the time oh wow yeah they've got a like a special relationship with a lot of bands that are just kind of in the know is the best way I know how to put it because a lot of bands play there and people don't really know about it but anyway mm -hmm. it's a great getaway for anyone in dallas fort worth if you want to go see your favorite bands at a killer fucking small venue that's more like say the old bronco bowl kind of a layout huh. uh or size you know it's a yeah. great place to see a show and get away yeah yeah that sounds awesome i'll have to look look it up because it's i i love seeing all the venues that are around and dfw the ones that are all left you know and then uh just you know all the ones that are around it, it's fun seeing the, a new venue um we got to play at um ragnar's on the compound um in san Mar you know the the people putting that that place on too so it, it, it's you know places like that are just badass you know they're like you know glad to hear that supporting all that stuff you know rock and uh keeping metal and, and music alive is what the what it's about so did y'all get a decent turnout at that ragnars um we had a well yeah i would say yes it, it's a small place in the the indoor venue they have like this outdoor stage uh set up but it, it's it has to be furnished with sound and lights and uh i don't think it has a canopy but um i think they thrown a festival on at one point there but uh, it's a really good place. Um, there was a good crowd there. It, it could be packed, it, it, um, but what th that show was kind of uh, interesting because there was no locals in that area. It was all DFW bands, so it was all mostly just bands, um, you know, and their you know family and friends that were at that show. But they brought you know we 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 brought you know our our, our people and we had like a, I think a few people that from down in that area that no rivet had that uh came out you know so it was a really good place though I, we really loved it the the, the uh, owners uh i think live there right next door and, and run that whole place there's a petting zoo yeah. out front which is badass the first thing we, we we rolled up and there's these goats and um these big jackrabbits and uh you know uh, these chickens that are up in the trees which is interesting but yeah it's it's, it's an interesting place Pretty cool. Yeah, I know the dude that runs the place is really cool. He was a fan of my old band, Mr. Freak and the Freak Show Band, even bought a CD and all of that before he set up that compound. Oh, and nice. so, yeah, yeah. So I thank the world of him and uh, want everything to work out there. I know Warhog played there last weekend or the week before. They said it was oh, nice. ass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those guys, uh, they... Uh, they, they talked to us about they're, they're wanting to get down there so it's good to hear that they got to got to play down there and they they had a killer show at trees too which is good to see like those guys would know where after i think o'reilly's was kind of their maybe their home or their starting place and that place closed and it was good to see that they're they're kicking ass and doing it and we're and we're gonna be playing with them too so we're, we're thrilled because they're they're really cool dudes and we love them so oh yeah that's good Okay, so Badass One wants you to know, a uh, good show coming May the 4th, and that would be Ted Nugent. So Ted Nugent plays up there at that Heritage Hall all the time with uh, Jared James Nichols, who is another guitar player. Is that right, Badass One? I think that's what he was saying, is that that's another Badass guitar player. Okay, uh, Mike Lambert, any other um, Rivet Head shows or music or videos you want to share with us? uh not at the moment man no. rock and roll well thank you yeah, we're, very we're much for taking the time to be here and um yeah i'll just I, hang out for a bit or unless you want to kick me off so let me know you're like no out. man i won't kick <laughs> never <you off>. never <laughs> like no let's see this little this little shh. yeah yeah there there's only a few of of you believe it or not but there are people like hef and even eddie lee now eddie lee's earned his way on uh, Rick Perry, uh, but that's, it's not many more than that. There might be another, uh, Megan, Megan, but you know, you're welcome to be here anytime. Everyone else, I tell them they can come on at nine 30. I appreciate it, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's knock out this concert calendar. Hey, Ariel, can you help us out here? 
Yeah, sorry, I'm wearing really thin, so I'm gonna try to hang in there. All we of have... us, let's rock it on through. April 10th, the National Parks, Fort Worth, Texas, at Tulips. The Eighth Wonder Tour. Another Tulips, April 3rd, which is tonight. No, April. Yep, that's tonight. Up yep. now in uh, Party Ops. Right, right. I, 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 I got to say, uh, Sharpie would have made it tonight, but they are all at the Crowbar concert. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are a one. couple of shows tonight. April 13th, next Saturday, we have the Strumbellas for their part-time Believer Tour. Then the Costellos, April 11th at Tulips. All right, do next week. They, do, do you think they just pour bleach into a bathtub and they all stick their heads in at the same time? No, those are wigs. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm not here <laughs> no to judge. <laughs> but she does play a banjo. Well, that's cool. Ding, ling, that'll, ling, scare, ling, that, ling. that'll scare the shit out of the float fest people. Ding, 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 ding. All right, so next week we have actress Max Wassa is going to be on next week. And then also joining us for the first 30 minutes of the show will be Megan Moshpit again, along with Mongo from Hillbilly Orchestra. So really exciting show next week with Mongo. And then after that, Dude, it's going to be... M Mongo, Mongo will be joining us? Yeah, next week. It's going to be next week. That's hey, uh, awesome. I love Mongo. He is such a wonderful dude, man. Fuck yeah. And makes great music. Yay. He's a big part of that hillbilly uh, throwdown with Megan Moshpit. So that's part of the angle here is to kind of help continue to promote the hillbilly throwdown. Wonderful. God bless you, Mongo. And then also, I don't know if you've taken the time. I'm going to encourage you this week. Please check the IDBM page here for Max Wassa. I'll be sharing it on the Blow Your Brains Out page, too, to make it easy for everyone. But she's been in, like, a hundred fucking cult classic movies, y'all. This is, a, you know, certainly one of our biggest guests ever. And uh, I hope that everybody will be prepared, not just to do a good interview, but to have a good time. You know, she's been in a hundred different movies. She was in, I think, three different rap videos. She was in the... Uh, Round and round music video for rap, the back no shit. wanted man. That's oh no awesome. shit, dude. That's what I'm saying. Gonna have to look that up. Hold on. Oh, dude, she was in Scream. <laughs> She's been in Halloween movies. I mean, it the list is so fucking long, dude. This chick has been in hundreds of cult classic movies. And not only that, she's produced multiple movies. She's produced, I don't know, five movies now. And she's a recording artist and um it's just going to be a great guest next week. Yes, and you combine I, that with I, Mongo. I love a good busybody. I love talking to a good busybody. Mm -hmm. Yep. So she's our age too, or my age. So she's experienced and still kicking ass and looking good. All right. So that's next week, everybody. Blow your brains out 8 p.m. So continuing this concert calendar, let's blow through. Pretty sure at the whole yeah, time with... Good luck Play reading that, that shit. Yeah, read those bands real fast. <laughs> it's Demon Seed, everybody. Texas Death Metal <laughs> Fest 2 at Halton Theater. April 6th. <laughs> Another show at Halton. Yep. Soothsayer. Next weekend. Zava. Zavza. I don't know who that band is. Mm -hmm. Death Row. Odin from the Tides. And from the tides? Yes, that's right. Soothsayer featuring. <laughs> it looks like, oh, I can read the Argonaut among the Fallen. And then we have Swarm. Are you familiar with and... that band, Among the Fallen? Yes. Uh, that's Jesse I... Greenstone. I used to watch him. Uh, he did live Facebook cam sessions. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, this one's coming up. This one's on Star Wars Day. Haltum. All right, so I'm happy to see Among the Fallen doing some more shows. So that's another Haltom Theater show, everybody. Be sure and get uh, out and, and support. And, uh, and also my friends in Swarm and Aphasic and Silver Tongue Devil. 
There you go. Hey, we, we need all of those bands on this show. Silver Tongue Devil. They used to rehearse right next door to me and my dead friends. Oh, dude, they're awesome. Wonderful people. Mm -hmm. My last spice is coming Saturday, May 18th. Where is it? Oh, Nigma's on the bill. Nigma's really good. If y'all uh, haven't seen them yet, y'all need to watch them. Uh, Dr. Jekyll's, you, you want to talk about a small venue. Dr. Jekyll's is just that. But those craft beers will get you fucked up, son. That's what I'm talking about. So craft beer, small venue, good time at Dr. Jekyll's, May 18th. Postmortem coming out. Um, this is the Diamond Shim show, I believe. Uh, this one's at Halton. Halton. Oh, okay, Halton. I think. Thank you. I think. Yeah. yeah. Sponsored by Halton. <laughs> <laughs> All your favorite death metal bands there. This one, I think, is. Okay, I, I, I will say this, and 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 fucking Mike will attest to this. Combi Christ is a live show that you have never seen before. And you will never see again because they are definitely one of a kind. Come be Christ. I think this Perfect. show is going on right now. Only death is immortal. Going right. on right well, now. Well, then you missed out. <laughs> hey, how about this? We're but squeezing in at three links. Friday, April 12th, Whisper City, tribute to Deftones. Okay, I love Oasis and I love Deftones, but it makes no sense to have an Oasis band next to a Deftones band. What about Incubus? There's Incubus in there, too. Okay, sure. <laughs> Drive. That's to smooth it out. <laughs> next Thursday Dude. on the 11th. Yeah, Manifested. That is a band that I totally want on this show. Manifested. They're a fantastic band that we need to get on the show. So that's next Thursday or two thirty? No, it's next Thursday, Thursday right? Mm -hmm. Not three links. Thanks for getting those three links shows in. Yeah, uh, Smoke Monkey Music Hall welcomes the Crimson Creek Cowboys. That's this weekend. This is actually my neck of the woods. That guy looks like there he has no arms. Plugging it for Flugerville. <laughs> Actually, no, oh, it's man. a Photoshop. Like it's, it looks like yeah. it's the Photoshop that wrong or something. Like and and that dude on the right, arms. his arms cut off too. Look at that. <laughs> He's a keyboard player. <laughs> Maybe they're like that though in real life. Ah, <laughs> what's it? You have to go see. Doyle a tap. That's Iron what you get in Forney, Texas. Take it to Mayo. All kinds of kinds oh. out here. Look Look at all of our friends playing this show right here. Iron Jaw, Love Six Drug, Ava Cora, Narwhal, I Hate, and Swarm all on the same show. That is going to be Ooh. a fantastic show right there. Dreadland is really good, too. Y'all need to see them. There yeah. it is. You can't go wrong. So it put Halton put together a kick-ass show for Doyle and Otep. I will say this one time, uh, Grain opened for Otep, and I'm not going to lie, their singer, uh, Otep, uh, she is one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. That's great. All right, if we had more time, we would definitely go through these death metal shows next week, hopefully. Moving on to Growl. This weekend, we've got lots of stuff going on. Tomorrow, Acoustic Jam. Friday, Music with Crooked Life, Cold Case. Harcourt, is it Kaitsu, Alter, and Inwood, and then Saturday, Nerve. But what is with these names? They're almost as bad as the. I can't Death remember. Band. Yes, they're. I'm, I'm guessing they're from Austin. Death Pact, Bad X, Mouth, and Red Harvest. And Sunday, hopefully, Sunshine. Why hey, there's not? our boys, the Argonaut. Yeah. Hey. All right, where's this show taking place? At Growl, Growl Records. Records. All ages are welcome. Just bring your ear protection. On the 21st. <laughs> all right, now's where we're going to take plenty of time. Oh. And read all of these <laughs> 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 now it's 
time to play. Name the metal band. They're like, yeah. All right. This is this is a group effort. Okay. Uh, who the fuck can name these bands? I tell That's you what, very death. They're they're smart. They're like, we're just not going to do that because then you can read it, and then everybody else they don't know who you know. Impartial wormed. execution <laughs> exit severed what? savior. So yeah, we need to dedicate a whole show, a whole Wednesday, to going through those human artifacts. Things. Got it. Here's another growl show. Nerve. Oh, this is one that we went over. This is a different. That's the picture. yeah. This is the same show that we just went over. Yeah, <gasps> perfect. Glad we had a flyer for it. Also, dead sleep tour. And, and that's the one that we went over. We earlier. went over. Yeah. And that's making the other it one bigger does not hurt. And there's another one we went over. Yay! Let's see. And we've been through that one. Okay. All right, so I pulled this off of the Blow Your Braids Out group Great page. Fine. Saturday, April 6th, vinyl record. Vinyl like record uh, wait, what, what is that? Is that like a vinyl sale or is that like a vinyl record uh, show of Dallas Fort Worth? I'm sure there will be multiple record vendors out there selling rare vinyl records. Oh, that's cool. That's fucking like cool. Forever shit, Young man. would probably be there. Good records would probably be there. People like that. Dope. Born, so born awesome late people. records. All right, there's that crowbar show that we missed that's tonight. tonight. Here we go. Here's our guys in Warhog and Vane Drowning Pool, the Verma Fest. June 15th, mark your calendars. And that's over, what's that venue again? That that's the studio, studio at the factory. factory. There it is, the studio at the James, factory. You owe me a Coke. Do, 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 do. There's a show um, with LSD on Sunday. I think I've got it here. Here's uh, LSD. Steve. Secret of Boris. That's my boy, uh, Ryan Bird. So this is a Reno show, too. That's this weekend. Secret of Boris. Our peeps at Perceive. Nice. Communication error. Paper Street. We, we need to get Perceived on this show. I think Perceived would do well on this show. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do it. Do it. Okay, here's the LSD show, Cindy's Birthday Bash, 1999, uh, The Legacy of Prince. Our friends in The Intemperate Sons will be on that show. Nice. April 7th, Halton Theater. There's that perceived show with Empires. Oh, wait, this is at the Red. That's Revel. tonight. Yeah, this is tonight. Look, that's three shows tonight. <laughs> Okay, this is that the studio also? Yes, it is. Yeah, the studio. Creeper, Iron low jaw. ear, iron jaw, life of scars, past the ammunition. So that is a bona fide heavy <laughs> fucking metal show right there. <laughs> That's this weekend. Suspended by everything. Saints can't lie. This weekend at trees. Offended by everything, so all of Twitter will be at that show. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Eddie Lee of and America. Iron Main. Mondo's Bizarro's. Another Haltom Theater show, April 27th. Flicker Stick, April 13th at Trees. And here's our guys in Vane, April 12th again. Vane, Iron Main, Ness, Dallas and Chains. Mouth of Boris? Mouth of what? Cronus. I'm going to say Cronus, yeah. That is a uh, Reno show. So here we are promoting Reno's. I'm glad, so glad we got some oh, Reno shows in there. And back at Diamond Gems, 420 mm -hmm. show. 
these guys from postmortem are supposed to come on. Eddie Lee keeps threatening me that he's going to get the guys from postmortem on to help promote that show. Eddie just you know, it's so Curtis weird that guys from postmortem look a lot like Teach and Chong, but you know. <laughs> Mouth of Cronus had to cancel, unfortunately. All right, so here's another Iron Jaw show with LSD. Oh, that's that same one with uh, Doyle and Otep. Right, yeah. Right, and there's the Cold and Orgy show that is now featuring yours truly, Mike Lambert, and Ribbit Head. Trees May the 2nd. Put that on your calendar, everyone. Ugly Mustard, vinyl release, Slow yeah. Roosevelt, vinyl release. Maybe you'll be able to catch these bands out at that. Um, yeah, if, if you're old enough to remember Ugly Mustard and Slow Roosevelt, I would say avoid the mosh pit area. So you don't get kicked in the face? Or, they, they hey, I'm, not saying, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything. I'm, I'm looking out for your hit. Uh, that's fine. All right, so that is it. We have pulled off another kick-ass Blow Your Brains Out podcast. Thank you, everyone, for being here. We'll see you next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Are there any songs that anybody wants to request on the way out? All of them. I just want Love to say, you guys. Uh, Eddie Lee say, wants you to know stars are putting on a scoring clinic. I just want to say thank you, Mike. Thank you, Megan. Uh, thank you, uh, Kid. Uh, Sammy, uh, thank you, Hank, and, and thank you, Ariel, and thank you, Rick. Uh, I love every Wednesday. It's it's just a pleasure and an honor, and thank you very much for hanging out with us. Blow your brains out every Wednesday, 8 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Enjoy yourself. Love you.
Thank you in advance for ordering in advance. The song truly free. Just go to your favorite MP3 ordering outlet and pre-order the song truly free by X Extential, which is spelled X Extend Chill. That's Dave Jarvis, the maestro there, making all of those cool groovy tunes. And then that's me singing. I wrote the words and sang on that. And what an honor that it is. I'm not expecting it to be everyone's favorite, but it's got to be someone's favorite. So y'all get out and order that. All right. So I'm going to play my favorite. There you go. Going to play two more songs. David Jarvis is still here. Hey, Dave, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I I, I will say this. Uh, I, I asked everybody what they were listening to, hoping that it would eventually lead back to me, but unfortunately it never did. So I, mm -hmm. I, I I got a little thing uh, going on right quick. Uh, I'm I'm sorry if I if I hold you up, but uh, you're so good. I, I've been okay, cool, cool. Uh, so lately, I've been listening to uh, Hawkwind. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Hawkwind, but that they, would be they were, Lemmy Killmister's first band. That, that is correct. Yeah, Lemmy's first band. Uh, I think his actual his actual name is Ian Killmister. Yeah. Uh, so, so I was very surprised to find that out. But uh, yeah, I, I listened to Hawkwind earlier today, and and uh, I'm pretty sure that is the band that Spinal Tap was making fun of when they made <laughs> their movie, because like all, all the the shit is like very much like uh, the Who pinball wizard type of like dizzying hippie metal, and then what's crazy is like right in the middle of it it like breaks down into like uh like this real low shit and then suddenly in the middle the music dies down and the singer tells of the one-eyed octopus who thrust all eight tentacles into the maiden's throbbing mound of love pudding in the mid in, in the background a single lute gives the tale of the character and before you know it 17 minutes have passed and it's still the same fucking song and i love that shit yeah 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 that's what they were man it was uh like a psychedelic hippie band of the 60s and i think lemmy actually joined the band he didn't like form the band if i remember right he he was a roadie so he was like a fan of music and helping out his friends and actually did some shit with Jimi hendrix like as a roadie for you know his english his gigs in england and so i think he was a um a roadie for the band and then joined the band as it turned out the songs that he sang on were their hit songs. Yeah, dude, it, it's it's fascinating to see that the the bridge that these bands, you know, they start this one way and then they end up in this other way, and that's what's really making uh, Linda Chadwick's uh, book that just that much more enthralling because that was the uh, the next step after bands like Hawkwind kind of fell aside and then bands like Motley Crue and uh, Quiet Riot started to go come on the come up. So it, it, it adds a, an extra layer to the wonderful, wonderful book Linda Chadwick currently has on sale if you are able to get it on the road with Linda Chadwick. It's a wonderful book. Please go out and purchase it. Fuck yeah. Thank you for that, David Jarvis. And also, Linda was on Blow Your Brains Out a couple of different episodes. So don't just watch one. Be prepared to watch two different episodes of Blow Your Brains Out from a couple of a few months ago. Uh, one is with Christian Shields. And both of them are really entertaining. So be sure to take the time to watch those. And uh, I, I don't know if anybody is still listening, but uh, I don't really care give a shit if they are but um <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm really sorry uh that i put the group chat down as ricky instead of rick 
Don't so quit. I'm, 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 no, no, no. I'm really sorry. It, it seemed like it upset you, and, I, and, and I'm, and I'm it really did sorry. It, if, so that's why if, I say if, quit. If, it didn't. Okay. Okay. Cool. Because you know, I, I love you to death, man. I love you. Let it be a I fine Ariel, example. And I, and I love this show, and I love hanging out with y'all every Wednesday. So if it. If I upset you, man, I'm really sorry. No, I, I man. Know. Let it be a fine example, David Jarvis, of how unoffended I, I can be. I mean, I'm just not that guy. I don't get offended. I don't let things bother me. It's just, it's not like that at all. Now, you know, if I told or asked someone, because I think I was kind about asking you or informing you that I spell my name Rick E. Yeah, it's Rick E. And it has been since I was 13. Like I was Rick E. before there was a Jake E. Lee. And, you know, I took hell for, for it. You know, all my life, people have given me a hard time for being Rick E. But here's the funny thing is you look on Facebook and a lot of people use their middle initial on Facebook. <laughs> so I was just ahead of my time. But anyway, man, I am unoffendable, bro. That's one of my superpowers. So don't ever think that way or ever worry about it. It ain't going to happen. Hmm. Okay, cool. Because the, the last thing I want to do is upset you you know I, I love you man this 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 show has been so wonderful to me and i i really can't thank you enough this this uh this this show has given me purpose and I, it wouldn't be possible without you so man i i love you to death and thank you for letting me be a part of your life man but seriously Damn right, brother. The feeling is totally mutual. I see that in you. And I was just talking to my brother, David, Dave Warden, earlier today. Uh, he's a fan of the show. He listens every week. And he was telling me about how kick-ass the show was last week. And, um, you know, how great of a combination all three of us make. You know, he thinks that together we're, you know, very entertaining. And, you know, he told me it couldn't have come together better. It just couldn't be better. So, man, thank you, Dave Jarvis. No, no, no. Th thank you, Ricky. Like, honestly, this th this would not be a thing without you. Okay? You are the creative driving force. You are the James Hetfield, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm I, I, I am merely the Kirk Hammett, and Ariel <laughs> is probably the Jason Newstead. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but but yeah, uh, together <laughs> we make something that is wonderful. And you're a wonderful dude, man. I, I thank you so much. Man. Oh, thank you, man. Especially under the circumstances, because you know, uh, I started the show basically because I am trapped at home. I, I raise my grandson and I work, and it fits my schedule to be at home doing something entertaining. And I would love to be out, like I. Uh, I don't go as far as to say I envy Bruce Gibson. You know, I just would be Bruce Gibson. You know, I, I would, uh, that's what I would be doing if I, well, I take that back because I play guitar and sing. So I would probably be out playing shows and consumed with my band and music and not be able to get out and promote shows uh, as much as I originally did. But, you know, that's what Outlaw Video TV was in its origins, man. I used to promote every fucking band I possibly could. And so, for example, that means um, War Beast. They were Texas Metal Alliance. I interviewed them as Texas Metal Alliance. And so when they became War Beast, I was privileged to get that interview when they announced their new name as War Beast and that they were staying together as a band. And, uh, you know, just kind of got to document the whole War Beast experience, man. And so, you know, I would be doing more of that. I just can't. And so, it, you know, I, I need, under the circumstances, I definitely need all the help I can get. So that's you and Ariel. And we're doing it, brother. Oh, absolutely. And, uh... I just want to say a uh, huge shout out to Derek James from Squeegee. Uh, rest in peace, bro. Uh, he passed away this past week. And uh, I just want to say, uh, I, I wish I would have known you better. You, you Dude, apparently he was also in Double Cross. 
Yeah, the few times that I got to hang out with him, he was always a really good guy. And, uh, man, uh, safe travels on your way, heaven, man. Uh, yeah, I saw okay. Rivet Head talking about it because he was their bass player, right? Yeah, yeah. And and he was the, the singer for a Squeegee. And uh, they, they definitely had a really great thing going for them. Very... Uh, very, very amazing band from the 90s that, you know, could have gone further, but, you know, shit happens. But Well, uh, you know, I go, I go way back, and so I knew Daniel from uh, Double Cross. That's how I got to know Double Cross was the singer Daniel. And, um, you know, apparently I haven't seen a Double Cross post in years, but they posted a goodbye to him, so... I, I can't remember if he played bass in that band. I, I'm assuming he did. But also, Jimmy was in that band. Jimmy uh, Fritz, who is now Creeper. He was a guitar player in Double Cross. Oh, uh, there you go. Okay. Well, okay. it's been a pleasure and an honor. I love you, Ricky. I love you, Ariel. And uh, I will see you all next week, okay? All right. Any song requests? I'm going to play a song by the Argonite and a song by um, uh, Hedonistic Punk Vatos. And then also I'm going to play Mother Love Bone by Hillbilly Orchestra and call it a night. No, that sounds like a good fucking lineup right there. Thank you very much, brother. Appreciate you. Oh, thank you, David. Look what you brought out of my brother. Badass one. I've known Rick E., for over 40 years, and I can testify to him being cool as shit. So are you, badass one. I miss you dearly. So thank you for being here. I mean, sincerely, this is what I do. This is my way of being able to be together with my friends. And it's uh, the show on May 11th, the shows that we're doing, it's really my only extension. I really don't get out, you know, un unless I'm with my grandson. You know, I can hang out with my friends if they want to come join my crazy grandson. <laughs> but, you know, that's not going to happen. I don't expect that. But everybody can get out to a show once a month and we can all have a good time together doing that. Absolutely. I love you, Ricky. You have a good rest of the night, all right? You too. Love you, David Jarvis. See you next Wednesday. Blow your brains out. Yes, sir. Baby boy, I'm living you
so good. I love that, man. That's fucking Hillbilly Orchestra. They're going to be playing the Hillbilly Throwdown Float Fest on May 18th. You saw the beautiful and lovely Megan Mosh Pit on the show again tonight. She will be here next week for the first 30 minutes of the show, uh, kind of like it was tonight, along with... This man right here, Mongo, the world according to Mongo. That's his band, Hillbilly Orchestra. That's him singing and playing bass there. That guitar is fucking awesome. I love everything about that song all the way down to the last yowza. All right, so this is the Argonaut. We've got one more song by the hedonistic punk Vatos after this, and we're going to call it a night. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And... Uh, Again, it, the band is called The Argonaut. The band is called The Argonaut. The song is called The Final Stand. So that's the Argonite right there. And coming at you right now is Hedonistic Punk Vatos. And I've got several of their songs, but this is my favorite called Mama Get My Gun. <laughs> Everybody get out early. May the 11th is a Saturday for Hedonistic. Who's with my girl the other day? Almost got run off the road. It was a guy in a Tesla from California. a violent guy. This is my story.